Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. Appreciate it, guys. Just to give you um, just a couple minutes here of finishing up something, and we'll be ready to start here in just a few minutes. So, Tom, thanks for joining me. APBA Chatter, how's it going? Uh, I am Jabolt. What's going on? Thanks for coming on by. Appreciate it, guys. All right, we'll start here in uh, just a few minutes. Alrighty guys, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it very, very much. We're going to be starting here just in a second here as soon as I make sure. Uh, can somebody give me a sound check in the chat if you don't mind? Just this quick sound check, make sure everything's working okay on your end. Sounds good, says Tom. There you go. All right. Here we go. Let's get rid of that. 
let's get rid of that and let's turn on this there we go all righty guys thank you very much for joining me tonight we're going to do our conclusion our final top six games again this is our comprehensive detailed listing of our 16 different card and dice baseball games uh, we've gone through episode one where we ranked number 16 down to number 12. We went through episode number two, which we ranked number 11 through number seven. And now tonight, finally we get to go and see where the final six remain. So uh, looking forward to sharing that with you guys. So a uh, big shout out to APBA Chatter, Tom Usher, Larry Harris, Captain Carl 8 McGill. Um, I am Jabolt and... Let's see, I thought there was somebody else that came by. Maybe I'm missing, if I missed your name, I apologize. But thank you guys for coming on by. Anyways, uh, so again, this is our, this is a, a breakdown that I've given for new players out there that are looking to uh, get into cards and dice baseball games, kind of overviewing the game, talking about the pros and cons that each game system has. And I can't see anything, so let me put my glasses on. And... Uh, you know, kind of uh, going over each game, the, the pros and the cons, what I like, what I don't like. Uh, but I'm giving it in my perspective. So you, something I might see as a con you might think is a pro. And something I might see as a uh, pro you might think is a con. So, uh, you know, I'm giving you all the information that uh, hopefully you can use to make a wise decision. Maybe you're trying to add a new gaming system to your repertoire out there. Maybe you're used to playing a certain gaming system and you want to add another one. Uh, so you're looking to find out, you know, what, what's available, what's out there, how much does it cost, uh, what, is, uh, what kind of system does it use, uh, does it have what I'm looking for in the gaming system. So uh, hopefully this will be uh, useful for new players out there and us uh, regular gamers out there that are still looking out for uh, new games to always come across so uh, thank you all all righty so uh, before we start just a couple uh, notes for you guys uh, if you're watching this this is a Monday night so this is Monday July 8th tomorrow night which is gonna be July 9th tomorrow night Tuesday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time we're gonna be talking Dungeons and Dragons with Tabletop Sports Delaware and Retro Sports Network. Yes, I realize that the All-Star Baseball game is on. So if you can't make it, I totally understand. That's not a problem. Um, you can always watch it afterwards. Uh, for me, I'm just, I'm not an All-Star guy. I'm not even into the Home Run Derby or anything like that. And I know that mostly Retro Sports Network isn't as well. And Tabletop Sports really isn't that. So uh, for the, us missing it, it's not a big deal, but for you, it might be very, very important and you might want to watch it. If you want to watch the episode afterwards, uh, it'll always be available for you. So we're going to do it tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. And yes, I do realize that the All-Star Game is on tomorrow night. I can watch, uh, I can watch the highlights and, I, and that'll be enough for me. I'll be totally satisfied. So, all right. Um, so that is tomorrow night, Tuesday night. Now... Another new announcement, uh, next Monday night, next Monday night, not Tuesday, but Monday night, we're going to be having another live chat. This time we're going to be chatting with TribeFan879. So we've been trying to get TribeFan on our live chat for a while. He's uh, finally finished up his Minnesota Twins 2016 replay, so he has a little bit of time. So we scheduled that for next Monday night at eight o'clock where we're going to get together and get to talk with him about his replays uh his love affair with cleveland uh you know um his gaming systems what he enjoys you know just basically find out more about tribe fan 879 one of our pillars of our community here in the foc youtube sports community so next monday night eight o'clock that'll be the 15th at 8 o'clock, TribeFan879. So looking forward to talking with TribeFan. Uh, so, and then tomorrow night at 8 o'clock is going to be our Dungeons & Dragons talk as well. So lots going on here in our channel. So I think I uh, appreciate everyone coming on by and uh, spending a little bit of time. So 
Day number, our first episode, we went through, well, let me go through the list of games that we are currently reviewing and detailing for you guys. So we have Payoff Pitch, we have Dynasty League, we have Everyday Player Baseball, Inside Pitch, Stratomatic, APBA, National Pastime Next Generation Plus, Replay, Play Ball, Roster Card, Internet Baseball League, Fall Classic, Status Pro Baseball, Superstar Baseball, Dice Baseball, and finally Deep Drive Baseball. And these are all in just random order, just as I was thinking them off the top of my head, I was typing them in. Uh, <clears throat> so, day number, our first episode, Number 16, Everyday Player Baseball. We gave that a total score of 5.5, so I'm catching everyone up. If you miss those other episodes, uh, if you don't want to know and you don't want to be surprised, go back and watch those. So spoiler alert coming up. And uh, so you might want to just mute things if you're in the live chat now and you haven't seen the other episodes and you want to watch them. Uh, if not, um, you know, uh, you can always go back and watch them anyways. But Everyday Player Baseball was number 16, total score 5.5. Number 15 was Superstar Baseball slash Sports Illustrated Baseball. I uh, gave that a final score of 5.8. Again, that was number 15. Number 14 was Play Ball Baseball. I uh, gave that a final score of 6.0. And number 13 was Dice Baseball. I gave that a 6.1. Number 13, Dice Baseball. And finally, the last... Uh, uh, the last uh, last one we did in the first episode, number 12, Status Pro Baseball, which I gave a final score of 6.5. 6.5 Status Pro Baseball. So in episode number two, we went through number 11 down to number seven. So again, if you didn't see the episode and you don't want to know, spoiler alert coming on, just to give you guys a heads up at a time. So if you want to go back and watch Zeus and not know, uh, just uh, mute everything right now. Otherwise, uh, you can go back and watch it later. Number 11, Deep Drive Baseball, user score 6.6. 6.6, number 11. Number 10, Dynasty League Baseball, total score 6.7. Dynasty League Baseball, number 10, final score 6.7. For number nine, number nine roster card, roster card baseball, number nine, gave that a total score of 7.0. Number eight, number eight was dun, 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 Internet Baseball League. Internet Baseball League, I gave that a final score of 7.1. 7.1. Number eight, Internet Baseball League. And finally, the last one we did last night in second episode, number seven, Replay Baseball. Replay Baseball, I gave that a final score of 7.4. So we're down to the final six, the final six from our list. Again, uh, this is just based upon my views, my opinions. I've done, uh, played many, many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games out there i think i am a semi game expert when it comes to game design uh, the functionality of a game and the overall value for your money put into the game and uh, i think i do a uh, you know just from all of my past experiences i think i do a good job of being able to comprehend the essence of a game and be able to rank it uh, you may not agree with my ranking which is totally fine because like i said something i see as a con you might see as a pro something i see as a pro you might see as a con you might disagree with what i have to say that is totally fine this is just information that i'm giving to share with you so you can uh, look at these other games that maybe you're not familiar with and decide for yourself if it would be something that you would be interested in trying out. Hey, James, how you doing? Larry, APBA, how's it going, guys? All right, so let's get to it. It's probably going to be a long episode because we're talking about the top six games. we got a lot to talk about, right? A lot to talk about. All right, well... Number six, there's only six left. It's coming down to the wire. Which ones are going to be up at the very, very top? 
And I think this one is going to surprise some people. Uh, is my number six value, my number six pick. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be disappointed with my pick here at number six, to be honest. Uh, but we will go over it and discuss it here in details uh, and explain why I've chosen this where I have. Number six is going to be Stratomatic Baseball. Stratomatic Baseball is number six for me. All right. So let's ask uh, the normal four questions that we ask all of our different games out there because a lot of people like to know. Is there lefty righty splits built into Stratomatic? The answer to that would be yes, 100%, but only if you use the advanced or super advanced rules. If you use the basic rules, there is no lefty righty split. So you have to use the advance or super advanced to get a lefty righty split. If you use the, uh, the advanced or the super advanced rules, you get 100% built in lefty righty split. So if you enjoy lefty righty splits or it's a requirement for you in your baseball game and uh, you want to play at least advanced or super advanced stratomatic, then you will get that 100%. Can you buy a PDF version of the game? No. Can you buy a printing copy of the game? Yes, you can buy the copies of the uh, from the store, and you're going to get your Stratomatic cards, which we're going to talk about here in a second. And then, is there a computer the version of this game? Because a lot of people like to know if I'm going to be using cards and dice, is there a way for me to use a computer version as well? So we always ask these same four questions. The answer with Stratomatic is obviously yes, there is a computer version of it. It is a purchase. It's not a monthly subscription. You purchase it one time and then you have it uh, that you can enjoy forever and ever. Amen. All right. So uh, the basic premise behind uh, Stratomatic for those players who have not experienced Stratomatic or are unfamiliar with it. Uh, we'll kind of, oop, all right, I guess I don't need all the cards anyways. I'll just get a couple of them. Um, so your pitchers um, and are going to be using, uh, so you're going to be rolling one six-sided dice, and that's going to tell you whether the result's going to come off the pitcher card or the batter card. A one, two, three, it comes off the batter card. A four, five, six, it comes off the pitcher card. So yes, it is a 50-50 split. If you don't like 50-50 split games for whatever reason, uh, that Stratomatic does use that half the time. You know, on average, half the time your result's going to come off a player card, and the other half of the time it's going to come off your pitcher card. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you're going to roll two other six-sided dices. We're going to add these together and get a result from two to twelve, and then it's just simply finding the column. If we roll a three. And then uh, on the original dice, and then we roll a six, we're going to look on the three six, whether it's a left-handed pitcher or a right-handed pitcher, or in the case of the pitcher card, a left-handed batter or right-handed batter. So if I roll a three six against a right-handed batter, we just simply go to the three column, find the six, and you get your result. There is also a 20-sided dice that you roll. You can roll it with your original six-sided dice like I do, or you can... Because uh, it's not a dice you use all the time, but there are certain results that will be split results. So if we look at, say, uh, Chris Carpenter's card here, and if we look at the six and the five column, if we roll a one, two, or three on the 20 sided dice, it would be a home run if you have normal power, and a four through 20 would be a double. If we roll a six and then a six, one would be a triple, and then two would be a, or two through 20 would be a single with two stars, meaning that the base runners advance two bases with the two stars on the single if you have base runners. So, uh, pretty elegant f system, but gives you lots of, uh, lots of different results um, off of your different cards because you're never sure if it's going to be off the pitcher card or the batter card. You can have situations where you can roll six times in a row off the pitcher card. 
And you can have situations where you roll six times off of the batter card. So, uh, you know, it's not just if you roll one time on the pitcher card, then the next time you use this card, it's always whatever that six-sided dice is. So that's kind of the basic premise. There are some charts uh, that you're going to be using. Okay, dokie. If you use the advanced or the super advanced, you're going to be using some charts, uh, which I will get to. There are basic charts as well, but you have some super advanced miscellaneous charts that you're going to be using. You can see they're big, big long charts, double sided with different uh, chart results on them. Uh, your basic ver basic version and your advanced version have slightly different charts. So if you're using the advanced version, you're going to be using different charts. Your basic version, you're going to be using different charts from that. Um, and uh, so there are different charts based upon the different system. Two or three pages of charts, though. Um, yeah, I shaved since the show. <laughs> I shaved today. That's right. Uh, funny guy. You didn't like my little uh, long, uh, whiskery gray hair, I guess. <laughs> All right. So, Stratomatic, uh, number six. Uh, let's talk about the pros for this for the game. Um, the pros is like what I just talked about. One of the pros is it's an elegant system that gives you plenty of results. You think rolling three six-sided dice wouldn't give you that many results, but there's actually quite a few results that you're going to get into. And with those three six-sided dice, one choosing your column and then two, the other two dice choosing the number on that column is a pretty elegant system. Uh, and of course, lefty-righty matchups uh, come into play. So some of the times you'll be reading your players versus what you know left left-handers or right-handers uh, so you can get you're going to be getting different results uh, you know and uh, so it's a pretty elegant uh, pretty elegant and fun system to actually get into it's not too complex the super advanced rules can get a little bit much in what they do but if you want more detail in your um, if you want more detail in your game then you might want to look at super advanced uh, the advanced, I would say, is the advanced version of Stratomatic is kind of, uh, I would say, middle tier. Your basic is simple, pretty basic, uh, and then your super advanced is pretty high level. Uh, it gets into uh, catcher blocking the plate and home run robberies and things like that. If you want to add that in, you can. And the other thing about the system is you can use a combination of any one of these things. You can use the advanced rules and then add in some of the advanced rules, or you can use the super advanced rules but not use all of them. You know, so it's kind of flexible. It lets you play how you want to play. If you if you want it to be more quick and not use all the advanced rules, or you might like the fact that uh, some of the cards have different, you know. Um, uh, you know, ballpark effects. You know, if you if you want to use ballpark effects. Some of the cards will have uh, little symbols on there that are going to alter the results instead of a ground ball to the pitcher. You're going to roll to see if it's a ballpark single. Uh, you know, so you can use some of them. You can not use some of them. So it's very flexible in how you want to play. Uh, you like the scruff. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so it's a pretty elegant, easy system to understand. There's, it's not too complex. Uh, the other thing I like about uh, Stratomatic is you get the play result right on the player's cards. So whenever the number is, I rolled a 6-6 six, six again. That's going to be, you know, against a right-handed batter. Uh, we're going to look and see and it's either a triple or a single. Uh, you know, if I'm on the batter's card and I roll a, uh, you know what, let's just roll some dice here and see what we got, right? So I'm going to roll... And I rolled a 2-7, so Nick is facing Chris Carpenter, he's a right-hander, 2-7 is going to be a fly ball to right field, but there is, uh, you know, there is some variations in there, as you can see on the 2-7, if you're unfamiliar with Stratomatic, everyone that plays Stratomatic knows, 2-7 is a fly ball to right field, and then it says B question mark, sometimes it'll say C, and sometimes it'll just say B, and those different letters represent what you're base runners can do so if there's a base runner on third base you can try and send him home if you want to with the question mark if it just says b question mark then he automatically goes home 
And if it says C, then it's not hit far enough out there, and so you can't. So, uh, you know, getting the play result off the player card, very fast and easy and uh, very nice, uh, elegant, fun system. That's all the positives. That's all the pros. Now we're going to talk about the cons. We're going to talk about the cons, and this might actually take me a little while. So... Uh, and that's why it's number six on the list. So number one con for me is the company. The actual Stratomatic company is living in the 70s and they haven't updated anything. So you can see on this, right? These cards are the way they were published, you know, back in the 70s and they haven't changed anything. They haven't updated. They're not up to modern times. Uh, they don't really, um, they don't really uh, uh, feel the need, I guess, to innovate and create and keep up with, you know, advancing through the ages. And they want to live, you know, back in the 70s where their heydays was and keep releasing the same way and keep doing the same things and, and uh, just not uh, advancing beyond that. Uh, you know, other game companies out there um, have updated the rules have updated their the way they do things added rules uh, maybe stratomatic has added a rule here or there but uh, they are still using the same format the same rules uh, the same uh, uh, you know same symbols the same abilities that their players are used to but they're not really innovating or doing anything um, to bring new players on you know, the players that have played this, uh, you know, if you look at the chat, there's players that have said, oh, I grew up playing this. And these are the people that are familiar with it, but they're not really making it available for people out there that are trying to, oh, you know, get into this game. Why would I want to try Stratomatic, uh, you know, now in 2018? In the 2070s, you didn't have much choice, but in the 2018s, you know, uh, 2019 uh, year, you have plenty of different baseball choices out there. So why would I choose this with the way this company has, has innovated or done anything to advance? Second con I have with Stratomatic. This is the second con I have with Stratomatic is you don't get all the player cards with the player sets. Even if you order extra player cards, you still don't get all of the players. So I wanted to be talking about this and I'm going to go on one of my famous rants. So if you're a Stratomatic fanboy, you might want to turn off or turn me off or go watch the, the, all, uh, the home run derby or something for a few minutes because I'm going to be talking about the fact that the company uh, doesn't release all of the sets or all the player cards with their sets. And uh, so this is just a warning for you. If you're a Stratomatic fanboy, you're not going to want to hear what I have to say about this. So you might want to turn me off for a little while and come back uh, because I've got a lot of things I want to say about this. So go take a break if you're a Stratomatic fanboy because you're not going to want to hear what I have to say about this. All right. So number one, if you own the Stratomatic player app, you're an idiot. You are a fool to own that, okay? The reason is what Stratomatic has done is bordering on illegal for having that. The reason is they have created the problem and now they've given their customers a solution to the problem that they created, but you have to pay for that solution, okay? So you don't get all of the player cards when you order the season sets or even if you order the, um, the extra players as well. And they don't do that because they want you to invest in their player app. The only way to get all the players is to get their player app, which is 
almost illegal by creating the problem and then giving you a solution to the problem that they created, but you have to pay for that solution. It's not like, oh, you know, we forgot, let's go ahead and release a PDF that everyone can download and print out these cards. No, you have to pay for that monthly service. So they created this problem by not releasing. If you get the computer version, you see all the players on there. You have access to all the player cards. But if you buy the actual cards, if you buy the actual cards to Stratomatic, and even if you order the extra set, you don't get all of the player cards. That is an issue that they have created and they've given you a solution to that. Hey, okay, if you want all the player cards, we're gonna create this app that you can have for $5 a month, okay? Morally and ethically, that's wrong for a company to do. Morally and ethically, that's wrong and it's almost bordering on illegal what they're doing with that. So if you own that app, you're an idiot and a fool. You have fallen for the company to step in and create the problem. They could simply fix the problem by releasing all of the cards, which they don't. They don't release all the cards because they make you buy that app. If they released all the cards and then they had the app, that's fine. That's your choice then because you can get the cards a different way, but you cannot get the cards printed out for you all the cards the only way to do that is through their app which is morally and ethically wrong so take that with a grain of salt when you look at whether or not you wish to invest in a company that wants to do something like that to their customers uh the other con I have with Stratomatic is, again, because they are using these paper cards, trying to shuffle through and find player cards is a nightmare. These are, these paper cards stick together, trying to separate them. You need to get, um, you know, you need to wet your fingers to flow through them and stuff. These are the worst one of the worst cards out there. They're even worse if you than the cards you print out on your card stock yourself. Those work better than these. These are almost stick together. Uh, these are been separated and worked a little bit more. But if I was to take you know a set that I haven't right, and I try to separate these cards one by one by one, you can see I got two cards stuck together here. Right, I got to try and pull it apart. And trying to find players. There's another one right here. See this? Uh, these two cards are stuck together. So they stick together. So if you're do, trying to run through a replay really quick, you got a card in your hand, you're rolling, boom, and you got to get to the next ones. A lot of times you got to use both hands to try and separate them. These old card, whatever uh paper they're using or whatever is not good quality it's not it just they just stick together right they just stick together like like glue it's just it's unbelievable the only way to do it is to separate your fingers or you got to sleeve them right you got to sleeve them yourself so uh another con in the system is the fact that they the just the actually using the cards is an issue this uh you know here's another two that are kind of sticking together right here right so uh you know you're going through looking for a certain player oh okay this this pitcher is coming in the game you gotta literally go through and try and find you know keep sticking together and looking for that player right so it just takes forever to try and manage these cards which it shouldn't be that way. That's what I'm talking about. The companies living in the 70s, they could have innovated and updated this to a better card quality or different, you know, a uh, different kind of paper, whatever they need to do. But they use the same, same thing that they've been doing for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, whatever it's been. And it's not, uh, it's not, Again, another reason why new players, why would I choose this company when I can't actually operate the cards? When I see other gaming systems out there that do it better, 
cheaper and and with better uh, uh, quality. So, you know, that's that for me is a super big con as well. I've been running my 2011 St. Louis Cardinals with the Stratomatic. And uh, you will you will see me fumbling around with the cards in that. So it's not like I'm just doing that uh, during this episode. To go back and watch these episodes, you will see it all the time. I'm fumbling around with the cards. I know there <coughs> there are uh, certain um, uh, there are certain. Um, there are, uh, let's see, um, what was I going to say? There are certain times in the videos that you'll see me fumbling around with the cards, trying to separate them and stuff. So uh, it's just, uh, it's an issue they haven't fixed. They don't see a need to fix it because their customers keep coming back and supporting them. And they don't see the need to do that. Uh, so keep that in mind if you go to invest in this game company. Another con for me, the customer service is not their strength. Really not. Okay, you made me say it. Their customer service is crap. Okay, their customer support for their customers in this is, is crap. I have plenty of examples I can give you, but I will demonstrate the easiest way. Here's my hockey game box that I got. Yes, that's right. This is my hockey game box I got. Oh, yeah. I've, I also got a note in that that said, oh, yeah, by the way, we ran out of hockey boxes. We'll be shipping out. Uh, we'll be shipping you out uh, the correct boxes when they come in. That was two months ago or so, and I haven't see, received anything from them yet. Doubt I ever will. Uh, that's just one example of the customer service that they've given us. Uh, there are uh, season season files from some of the seasons that you purchase when you get the you get these uh, little charts that you get with each of your season you order. I have some seasons that didn't have the little charts with them. Uh, and you know what I have to do is then go on to their website and download the version and uh, print it out myself because it's not worth even calling them trying to get get anything. So the company's living in the 70s, uh, not keeping up with the times. They don't include every player card, even though you order all the player cards you can possibly order from them, spend all that extra money, they still don't give you all the player cards. Which force you, again, if, you're, if you have the player app, again, if you're a Stratomatic fan, I'm sorry. I'm just giving you the way it is. If you have the app, you're a fool and an idiot. Because you're supporting a company that created a problem and they're giving you a solution to the problem that you have to pay for. They could easily release the cards to everyone to be able to download or print or, okay, or... How about you just, you know, when you order all the extra player cards, you actually include all the extra player cards. When I order uh, the extra player cards, I expect all the extra player cards, not just the ones you want to give me and then have me sign up for your $5 a month app. It's morally and ethically wrong and is bordering on illegal because they created the problem because they're, with, they're, they're withholding player cards illegally from you and they've given you a solution to the problem when a company does that it's bad company practice and it's bordering on illegal so because of all this uh you know i want to support this i want to support stratomatic i've ordered a bunch of their stuff uh i i enjoy this system i enjoy uh playing with the cards okay it's nothing against that. The system is elegant and fun, which we talked about in one of the pros. You get the results pretty quickly. You don't have too many charts involved. Uh, and, um, you know, I want to support this company, but because of the cons, because of the way the company is, they aren't going to get ranked any higher than number six on my list. In fact, they're lucky they have a really good system or they wouldn't even have been that high to be honest. 
if their if their game wasn't as fun as it is and it's interesting and unique and uh you know uh fun to play they wouldn't be ranked down in the number six value because of all the major cons that they have they've got of all the games that we've come across so far they have probably the most serious cons of any game system we've come across the only thing that keeps them this though is because their game is fun and it's it's interesting and and uh, you know it is uh, a, a lot of um, you know uh, pretty quick to play and you know pretty interesting with the charts and there's not too much chart look up or anything like that so stratomatic I know you're probably I don't even want to watch I don't even probably want to see what's going on in the chat right now but stratomatic 7.5 number six so i am gonna look at the chat ah. yep stratomatic lucky to be number six that's true i mean again uh i they would be higher on the list if it wasn't for the fact that they have a good game all right and because this this review is mostly about the cards and dice game but they have some serious serious flaws when you send out when you send out to a customer a blank box right a blank box that 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 doesn't show me good customer support does that show you guys good customer support i uh, ordered some uh, like i said i've ordered some other stuff from them where i've had uh, season files completely missing completely missing from the order which you, then you got to call them give me your order number give them all the details all the information then they get back with you like two weeks later uh, because they hadn't contacted you you call them again and finally after you know a month or two you finally get your season file that you ordered you know with the original set I was sitting here with my extra cards uh, for the 2011 set, but I didn't have the original player cards for the longest time Because they didn't even include that in the box didn't even include it in the box uh, That is again. I'm just giving you just things off the top of my head about their their customer support You want to talk about customer support, right? You want to talk about customer support? You want to know why they're number six, right? You want to know why they're number six? All right, I'll show you why they're number six All right, I'll show you why they're number six. Left field, let's look at the left field. Here's our super advanced fielding chart, which takes up three feet of room on your precious table where you're trying to run your game, plus all the other charts that you need to keep out there, right? Here it is. 100% of that on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of piece of, uh, of uh, cardstock. I took all of this information. Oh, wrong side. Sorry, wrong side. I took all of this information and condensed it down to a simple eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Why do they not sell this in 11 and a half, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper? Because they can charge you five to ten dollars for this they can't charge you five to ten dollars for this even though they can fit it on a simple sheet of paper like this they don't want to because they want to be able to charge you five to ten dollars for this that's what they want to do all right so enough about stratomatic uh I, you know if you're a stratomatic fan you love stratomatic i'm not going to convince you otherwise that's fine uh but you know because I would love to have Stratomatic one or two on this list or three, you know, top three. I mean, most people I would think put would, would put Stratomatic, you know, when we were talking about games, you know, I would say uh, probably over half the people that I know would put Stratomatic in their top three baseball games. Uh, but for me, it's more about quality, customer support what you get value for what you get and the way the company treats their, their uh, customers 
And because of all those factors, every time you think of it, it keeps rising higher and higher and higher and higher up the list. Number six, Stratomatic. All right, well, let's move on to number five. Number five, and again, I think this is going to surprise and shock a lot of people out there. I got to reach back here. Number five, APBA Baseball. All right, APBA Baseball. Is number five. We'll look at uh, the charts and stuff here in a minute. But uh, when you order it, you get the uh, you get if you order the basic game, you're going to get the basic board book, which is humongous for some odd reason. It's massive with all the different boards. You can also order a master version. The reason I'm covering this is because we're going to talk about some of this stuff in a minute. You can also order the master game edition as well which will add master value in stats if you own the certain cards that, um, that have the master stats on them. So let's ask our four questions we like to ask on each system. Is there lefty-righty splits? Well, that depends on the version of the game you're playing, right? And if you're using any of the mods out there for the game system. So it doesn't have built-in lefty-righty splits in the normal version. In the Master Edition, there is lefty-righty splits built into it. And then a lot of the mods that are out there for APBA also have lefty-righty matchups. So if you play just basic vanilla APBA, there is no lefty-righty. Pretty much every other version out there does have it. Uh, can you buy a PDF version of the game? No, you cannot. Can you buy a printed copy of the game? Yes. And is there a computer version of this game? Yes. Uh, and since we're talking about computer versions of the game, it's either subscription-based, where you pay a certain amount each month and you have access to all their seasons, or you can buy each season individually and have that for yourself, and then you can play that anytime you want. Uh, so... APA, APBA Go, I think is the name of it. I've tried it out a few times. It's not a bad online game. Uh, you can get a trial, free trial version. It only gives you like three, two or four teams to play with, though, uh, just to kind of let you see how everything operates. It's not bad, uh, you know, especially the season files are like $20, so... If you don't have a lot of time for cards and dice, but you still want to play APBA, uh, you can buy one of the online season files for $20. And then uh, the more you actually spend on the season files, the more you play other files, be, you know, other seasons become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper to buy. So it's, it's I don't think every single season file is $20. Um, uh, so uh, it does um, it does have that. All right, pros. All right. This is going to be a very difficult um, review for me because there, uh, and that's why I wanted to show you the boards or, or talk about the boards, right? So you have the master game and then you have the basic game, right? When you're talking APBA, there is a huge, massive difference between the, the basic version and the master edition, okay? We just talked about Stratomatic having a basic edition, an advanced edition, and a super advanced edition, right? If you took Stratomatic basic and Stratomatic super advanced, that is not as different as regular APBA is to master edition. There is just so much more in the master edition. So it's going to be hard for me to talk about pros and cons because sometimes it's a pro for this edition, but it's also a con for this edition. Back, you know, it depends on which edition you're really talking about. Okay, uh, so I, I will kind of I didn't want I kind of want to clear that up uh, right off the bat uh, because you're when you're talking APBA, you're not just talking one game. 
there's basically three different games. There's the basic edition, there is the master edition, and then there's the mod edition. And when we're talking about mods, we're talking about players that have created files to use for APA uh, to uh, play the game in a different kind of way than what's in the basic edition in a different way that's when it, what's in the master edition so you kind of have three different things here you have a basic edition you have a master edition they have a mod edition which takes some of the rules from the basic and some of the rules from the advanced and kind of combines them into its own little thing okay so when i'm talking about pros and cons it may not apply to all the editions that we're talking about. Oh, before I get to pros and cons, let's actually show you how to play the game, right? So, uh, APA, APBA, right? Basically, on a player card, right? You're going to have 11 through 66. You're going to roll two six sided dice, one red dice, one white dice. You're going to read them as the red dice and the white dice. So, if the red dice is a six and the white dice is a one, that's a 61. You look at that number in the black, and then you look adjacent to it in the number in the red, and you're going to get your play result. In this case, it's a 24. A 24 is going to give you a play result based upon the situation that's going on with the uh, with the runners on base. So you will have a no one on base. You'll have a runner first. You have a runner second. You have a runner on third. You have a runner on first and second, you have a runner on first and third, and you'll finally will have a bases full chart. So the 24 that you roll on bases with first and third base might be a little bit different than the one that's on, say, you know, if there's just a runner on, say, second base, right? So, uh, you know, we rolled a 24, uh, and something else we didn't really I really, really didn't want to get into, but you're going to look and see what the result is uh, for that number. So that's that's the basic concept of it. Uh, each player is also rated in a, its defensive value. Uh, so you can see here, Aguilar, Aguilar, Aguilar. Oh, Aguilar, you're crazy, dude. What's up with you? Come on. There we go. Aguilar is a first baseman. The first number behind him is a four. And what you're going to do is you're going to total up all of your um, your different positions and you're going to get a final score. And that's going to tell you whether your your total team defense is, you know, a value one, a value two, or a value three to kind of put it in layman's terms. Okay. Uh, higher is better. Uh, each position is rated for different, has a different range of numbers though. So that's kind of something to keep in track. Uh, and then um, you will have, uh, you know, when we talked about the master edition rules, the master edition rules, you'll have number or you'll have uh, letters and numbers up here at the top and also down here at the bottom. So this will be a uh, plus one which is good for the batters. So he will drop the pitcher value down by one and minus two versus right-hander. So if he's facing a right-hander, the right-handed pitcher actually goes up two values. So you take these combinations, which will help you play the master edition. So um, the, the pitcher's cards, right, are not really like in normal, like our normal uh, uh, baseball game, right? They're just there showing you their batting numbers. And then the pitcher has their own stats and values kind of up at the top. And then down at the bottom here, if you're playing the Master Edition, you can see that 15 in, parenth uh, in parentheses there. That shows you his pitching value. So when the batter has, if you're playing the Master Edition, if uh, Aguilar is facing Miley and Miley throws left, Aguilar is a plus one. So his 15 is going to drop down to a 14 because he's better against lefties than he is right-handers. So, and then you're going to look at uh, these different results. <sighs> so that's a lot to kind of explain. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, I knew this was going to take a little while. And that's why I said uh, we might <laughs> we're going to get through all of them, but it might take a little while. So pros, uh, APBA is a very easy game to play, very, very easy to understand, especially if you play the basic edition. The basic edition, 
which doesn't add a lot of the lefty righty splits it doesn't add a lot of the confusing extra rules and it doesn't add a lot of the modifiers on the pitchers uh, can be a very very easy game to play you roll the dice you look at the card you go okay i rolled a 32 i look at 32 and i go oh that's a 26 i look at the chart boom done move on to the next guy the stock is roll again in this case i rolled a 36 36 is a 33 you look at the chart 33 you find the result move on to the next guy it's very quick and easy you just look at the chart look at the player and um especially when you're playing with the basic edition uh when you go up and i should just say when you play the master edition as you see i own both of those the master edition as i said is a huge huge step up in the complexity of the game because a lot of the plays instead of just being a out six four or i'm sorry six three or a fly ball to left or uh you know a ground ball back to the pitcher or whatever you're going to be taking in a lot more different values and different stats you're going to be adding and subtracting different values to one another especially when we're talking about steals uh and then the using the formula in the book if you end up with a result of 26 26 isn't the value you roll or less for a success right no it's not how it works 26 is based upon the 36 different values you can have so you have a 26 out of 36 chance so it can be a little bit a little bit extra and a little bit more confusing um another pro is for apba is there are different levels of complexity we just talked about uh if you want to play a basic edition if you want to play a basic modded edition if you want to play the master edition if you want to play something in between the basic and the master that has some of the rules from the master edition some of the rules from the basic edition there are plenty of different boards out there for you to download and try here is i'll show you all of the different systems that i have come across that have different stats and values that here's you know here's one here's a different game here's a different game here's a different game there's like i got like four or five different modded boards out there uh to be able to use and the, basically the difference between them is twofold what do you do with your stealing do you use the basic edition where it's already built into the system do you use the master edition where you have to calculate steel values based upon the run rating the or the speed of the runner and uh, the throw throwing arm of the outfielder that it went to uh, and then calculating that upon which base running he's going to oh so you know what do you do with your stealing how do you handle stealing you can play a master modded edition that has stealing built into it you can play a master modded edition that has the master uh, boards but it has the stealing as the master edition hopefully that makes sense uh, you can play a basic version that has the master edition of stealing. So you have to think about what, what you want to do with your stealing, and then also what you want to do with your bunting and hitting and running. Uh, are you going to use separate charts for your hitting and running and your, um, your uh, uh, hitting and running and your bunting? Are you going to use separate charts for those, or do you are you going to use the basic edition for that uh you know how do, how are you, how are you going to handle those three things the stealing the hitting and running and the sacrificing are you going to use the basic edition boards are you going to use the advanced edition boards are you going to have an offshoot that has some of that built into it all right so uh so another pro we just talked about there are many many fan created charts and boards out there that can add to your enjoyment of APBA. Uh, so if you if you don't want to, you know, I, I hate sometimes 
putting the stealing on me. You know, when do I steal? When do I not steal? You can have it built right into the system where you don't even have to worry about that. It'll tell you on the play. Player gets a single and then steals second base. Boom, done. It's done for you. So you don't, you're never put in that situation. Some players are like, I want to have full control so I can steal when I want to steal. So it's up to you. There are a lot of variations out there that will let you do it and play however you want. Uh, and then the last thing and one of the, the strong suits about APBA is once you learn what the numbers are, right? The numbers in red, the red numbers, right? Once you learn what those are, the game is so much faster because you don't have to look at the boards anymore. So if you look at, say, a 15, a 15 is a 13, a 13 is a strikeout, unless the pitcher has a double Z, I think it is, or whatever it is, right? So if you're, the pitcher doesn't have a double Z, a 13 is a strikeout, a 14 is a walk, uh, a 30 is a fly to left, a 31 is a fly to center, a 32 is a fly to right. There's certain ones that you get all the time that you'll start to learn. The more numbers you learn, the quicker and faster. I mean, you can just roll the dice and look. Oh, that's a 13. That's a strike them out. Roll, you know, go to the next guy. Okay, roll the dice. Boom, we rolled a 41. 41 is a 24. 24, I think, is a 4-3 ground out. Ground ball to second over to first. So if somebody in the chat can let me know, I'm sure APA, APBA chatter will know for sure what a 24 is, but I think a 24 is a ground ball to second. Uh, so I can, you know, might mark that one down, roll the dice again. Boom, 45. 45 is a 14. Well, he walked him, right? So he's on first. So now I got to go to the first player or runner on first chart. So now I roll again, 25. 25 is an eight. Normally an eight is a single. If you play the master edition, your pitcher might take the single away though. So um, once you understand the numbers, uh, it makes it uh, so much easier and, and um, uh uh, faster to play the game and you know I'm sure there's a lot of APBA experts out there that can tell you what every single one of these numbers are and after you know if I only played a couple games and I know what some of the numbers are already so yay me um, I don't know what all the numbers are but I know what some of the numbers are which is you know starting to help but the more you come across certain numbers you're gonna go oh yeah I know what that is I know what that is we know a one is a home run right boom done uh, so that is the Pro 6-3 or 6-4-3. A 24 is a grounder to short. Okay, 26 is a ground ball to second base then. I think, I know 24 and 26 were the two ground ball outs. So, all right. Uh, so that's all the pros. Let's talk about the cons. Cons. All right. Not, you know, when, we, when we've been doing this, we talked about all the pros and cons for every single game. There's no perfect game. You're not going to see one that gets a perfect score in, in, in for me anyways. Uh, there is certain things I take from some games and certain things I take from this game and certain things I take from this game. And uh, just because I rank a game number 15 or number 14 or number 16 doesn't mean it might be not your favorite game ever because everybody's different. So keep that in mind. Cons for this game. All right. <laughs> This is a biggie. This is going to be a biggie. It is the most expensive game on the list. The most expensive game on the list to get into because if you want to play the Master Edition, of course, you've got to order the Basic Edition and then the Master Edition boards. And then, not only that, you have to buy a Season File, which is $70. Last time I looked, 70, $70. For a season file. If you plan on doing a replay, you have to order the extra player cards as well. If you plan on doing a replay, uh, keeping statistics or whatever, and you want all those extra players, you have to order the extra player cards. Don't believe me? Go look at tabletop um, or uh, tabletop baseball. And watch Earl when he was doing his APBA replay of the uh, Milwaukee Brewers. Episode 1, first thing he says is he made a mistake. He didn't order the extra player cards. You have to order the extra player cards, which is, I think, another $40. So for a season file, you're looking at $110 once you have purchased 
the basic edition and the master edition, which is a pretty steep buy-in. The other thing is I have been on the APBA website for over a year now, probably maybe even closer to two years as time flies by. Who knows? I might even be three or four years by now. Who knows? I've been getting their emails every month and they give you updates on their convention schedules and this and that and the other thing. I have never once got an email from them saying, oh, by the way, we're having a 25% off sale or a 30% off sale. I've never seen any sales from APBA. You know, at least, uh, you know, as much as I bash on Stratomatic for their piss poor customer service and their, the way they cheat their customers and everything else, I get an email from them today that they're running a five-day sale. Every day they're going to have a new sale on that. So, you know, Stratomatic is very expensive to begin with, but at least they run sales. APBA, as far as I know, have never run a sale, so it's a pretty big buy-in to get a season file. If you're going to run a replay, you need those extra files, you need the basic boards, and you need the master boards if you plan on using the master edition. Uh, quality for the price, all right, quality for the price, all right, you would think these would be made out of gold, right, because of how much money you spend into them, all right, the quality is pretty good, I will give, I will give APBA credit for this, all right, we talked about the fact that I cannot do this with my Stratomatic cards, right? I cannot grab a card and go to the next card, right? You can see that. I, I pretty much grab a card, go to the next card. There is a little bit of stickiness to them, but the you know the, the more you play with them, the more that stickiness kind of kind of goes away. All right. Oops. See there, I just grabbed two cards. Um, but. Uh, you know, and I like the look of them with the round corners instead of just being a big square, which is nice. But I, I think, uh, you know, I think they would have could have been a little bit thicker. They're still a little bit thin compared to some of the others we'll talk about here, you know, coming up. Uh, they, they're still a little thin on their, you know, when you're, you still hear that ting, all right? Ting, higher pitched means it's thinner, right? So it's a little bit thinner. Uh, and then, you know, some of the text can be a little bit small on the cards. Something as important, all right, something as important as if I'm playing the Master Edition, oops, i got to turn the card. If I'm playing the Master Edition, the most important thing I want to know is what the pitcher value is. And it's the littlest, tiniest number you could possibly put on a card. And that is the most important number for me, all right? And so if I didn't have my glasses on, there is no way I could read that no way I could read that little tiny, tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny number. So just uh, the quality is not bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's bad quality or anything like that. It's like some of the games we talked about earlier, it's not bad quality. It just could have been a little bit better for as much as you're spending. All right. And you'll see why when we get to some of the, no some of the lower number, uh, uh, some of the lower number, uh, uh, cards and we'll show you the difference um, and then kind of another con for me okay we've been talking about this this whole review of APBA is the fact that you have to you don't have to but a lot of people have to use mods to get the most out of this game right and you have to have uh, you have to have somebody that has the mods that can send them to you. It's not like you can go to the APBA website and go, oh, I want to download this mod. I want to go download this mod. I want to download this one. And, oh, this one sounds good or this one sounds good. Okay. It's kind of like an underground neighborhood. You got to you gotta go deep, deep down into the bowels of earth to try and find the mods that you need to play this game. Right. It's it, for me. It was super hard to try and find. I had to, you know, find, you know, I emailed some people. I got a hold of a guy who knew a guy and his uncle, his uncle. He, he made me a deal I couldn't refuse, right? It's almost like that. Just, just get these mods. <coughs> you think if, uh, if APBA, if I was a designer of APBA and I had 80% of my customer base 
using the Merino boards or an Osu to the Merino boards, why wouldn't I support them and put them on my website and go, hey, you know, this guy did a great thing for us. Let's support them. Boom, here you go. There's there's the boards. Put all the boards out that you want to do, but no, you have to kind of, you got to find them somewhere hidden down in the bowels of the earth to try and get your hands on some of these files. Uh, so hopefully you have friends. I don't have any friends, so I couldn't ask friends for uh, help on this. But uh, so hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll have some friends. You'll be able to ask them uh, for the bods. So APBA number five, seven point seven for APBA. Uh, Delphi groups and Facebook groups have mods readily available. Yeah, but uh, I, I'm going to bring this point up to most people because I had someone post a comment earlier uh, from yesterday's episode saying that, well, if you join this Facebook group, you can get all kinds of mods for this game. All right. When I'm talking about support for a game, I'm not talking about diving down into the bowels of earth to try and get these mods if i go on the internet and i type in you know whatever the game system is and i say i want files for this game system and nothing comes back that tells me that the game's not being supported it's there the files are not being readily distributed whatever the situation is okay I shouldn't have to join a Delphi group. I shouldn't have to find, uh, join a Yahoo group. I shouldn't have to submit to all that BS to try and get some files, right? If, if I'm a game designer, right? If I'm a game designer, whatever my game is, and there's files out there, I create a website which takes like five minutes and I post those files for people to download and get and have access to. I don't make you go to some Yahoo group or find a guy that knows a guy that might have something if you send him the secret password. That's not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about games being uh, supported. I'm talking about, I can do a search on Google, click on a website and oh, look, here's a season file for that game. Download, do, excellent, I've got it, boom. and. 30 seconds. I'm not talking about emailing a guy that knows a guy. That's what I'm talking about support. Okay. So APBA number five, 7.7. All right. Uh, let's see. Let me just check the chat. Uh, Doug, I am not doing History Maker Baseball. If you watched episode one, it kind of went through that and the reasons for that. Uh, just broad overview. It has three things that I don't have I, or don't enjoy in a game. So I don't own the game. So I'm not going to review a game that I haven't played and I have no interest in playing. So uh, History Maker, if you want to check out History Maker Baseball. Uh, baseball Demos does a wonderful job, enjoys it a lot. Uh, Rob Explanation Point has done some Mystery Maker Baseball, and there's some other YouTube uh, friends of the community channels that do History Maker Baseball, and you can get your fix from them. Um, Combat Painter is another channel that's been doing some uh, History Maker Baseball. Uh, so definitely check out those three channels. Uh, speaking of channel updates, let's talk before we go to number four. Two updates. Number one, tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, 8 Tomorrow night, Tuesday night, 8 o'clock, Tabletop Sports Delaware, Retro Sports Network, and myself are going to be talking Dungeons and Dragons, assuming that uh, uh, Tabletop Sports Delaware is still talking to me after my rant about Stratomatic. Uh, assuming he still wants to get on and enjoy time spending with us, we're going to talk Dungeons and Dragons, resources out there, experiences, uh, how to get into the system, uh, what these... Uh, different players enjoyed what they're looking for uh, you know kind of just a broad overview a broad stroke of what D&D &D is and uh, what what enjoyment they get from it so tomorrow at eight o'clock 
Uh, we're going to be doing that. And then for you guys just joining us next Monday night, which is the 15th, Monday night, 8 o'clock, the 15th, we're going to be having another live chat with one of our friends of the community, Tribe Van 879 is going to be coming on. So Tribe Van 879, he's finished up his uh, Twins 2016 replay. So now that he's finished with that, he's going to come on, talk about his Twins replay, stats, Stratomatic. Oh, yeah, we're going to ask him about Stratomatic. You know that for sure. Um, we're going to talk to him about his love affair with the Tribe, how they're doing this season, what moves he thinks they should make. Uh, you know, stuff about himself, uh, you know, what his likes and interests and stuff. So if you want to find out more about Tribe Fan 877, uh, Tribe Fan, uh, so confused with these numbers now. Uh, Tribe Fan 879, uh, be sure to come by next Monday, the 15th at 8 o'clock. All right, uh, so those two announcements. So let's go on to number four. Uh, baseball demos. The APBA game is growing on me as well. Yep. All right. I'm kind of on board. Unfortunately, Satomatic has soared, soared a bit, hence APBA. Uh, Tom, APBA is growing on me with the basic and advanced stealing and fielding. Uh, I never thought I would ever like APBA, uh, and it's definitely grabbed him. Yeah, uh, every one of these games, I'm telling you guys, every single one of these games, whether it's ranked number one or number 16, is a good game in itself, all right? Every game can be enjoyed. Every game is worthy of, of, of being bought and played, all right? There's not a single game on this list I don't own because I've shown you every single one of these. I've owned all of these games. There's not a single game that I haven't played on my channel. There isn't a single game I won't play on my channel. Each one of these games is great. You have to just experience it for yourself, right? You have to get out. That's why one of the reasons I'm doing this is to show you guys there is a lot of stuff out there. Maybe you've never heard of, you know, some of these games, or maybe you've never tried it. I mean, I would have liked to try APBA a long time ago, right? I actually bought it a long time ago and never played it and then got rid of it. I wish I would have played it back then because maybe it would have been something I like. I actually like APBA a real lot except for the issues we talked about, right? It is, uh, it's actually a really fun little system. It, you, the flow is really good and really fast. Uh, so every one of these games deserves your time and attention. Some players just don't have as much as I have. So, all right, we're moving on. All right, we're gonna move on. Number four, and then there was just four left. If you're following along, you know what those four are. And there's probably a lot of surprises there. We've gone through a lot of the big hitters already. So we've got some that maybe um, some people aren't familiar with that are coming up. Or some that people aren't expecting to be as high as they are. And we're going to go through those. So number four. And this is a surprise for me too. It's going to be Fall Classic Baseball. This is a game I just found maybe six months, so less than a year, Fall Classic Baseball. Uh, so let's ask the four questions we ask about all the games. Is there lefty, righty splits? Uh, if, you, if that's important to you, only certain roles will give you a, a lefty, righty split on this. Uh, you're gonna, we'll talk about how the game's played, but only on certain roles, uh, then those results uh, will give you a lefty, righty split. Uh, but if you don't ever roll those rolls, it's not 100% built into, uh, like, I'm going to look on the left-handed column or the right-handed column, like uh, Internet Baseball League or something like that, um, or Stratomatic, where it has lefties on one side and righties on the other. It's not like that. It's just certain rolls will give you lefty and righty. Uh, can I buy a PDF version of the game? Yes. Can I buy a printed copy of the game? Yes. And is there a computer version of this game? No, there is no computer version of this game, but there's an asterisk to that. And we're going to talk about that here in a minute when we talk about the uh, the pros and cons of the system. So um, I'm going to show you the basic flow is very simple. You're going to get your lineups. You're going to get your 
uh, you know, everything uh, set and ready to play. And then uh, each of the different batters are going to be, uh, you're going to roll a two six-sided dice. Two six-sided dice. Yeah, pretty simple, right? And you're going to look at the batter card. So you're going to go straight to the batter card, and you're going to look to see if what you roll has a result on it. If I roll a 33, you can see it's a walk and a plus, which means he's going to steal second base if you use the built-in steal system. If I roll a 35, you will notice there's no result there. So on a 35, I will then look at the pincher card to see what 35 shows up for us, which we will get to here as soon as it decides to focus in on... There we go. So 35. 35 is, you notice there's one column that says single, there's one column that says out, and there's another column that says single. Um, we'll talk about that here in a little bit, but so that's, that's as simple as it gets. You get your lineup, you get your pitcher card, you put your pitcher card out in your lineups, you roll two six-sided dice, you look at the pitcher, or you look at the batter card and look to see if it has a result. If it doesn't have a result, if it's blank, right, then you just go and look at that number on the pitcher card and see what the result is. If it has a result, then that is the result of the play. Some of them will be variable. Uh, so like example, if we roll say a 60 or a 55, if it's a triple on a one to eight, otherwise it's a single. On a 44, it's a single one to 19 or it's a walk, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then we talked about the variable uh, lefty righty splits. You can see number 25 and number 26 down there. If it's a left-handed, if the pitcher throws left, that's what TL stands for. If he throws left, it is a single. If it's a throw right, then obviously it's an out. Uh, and then all your stats and stuff down there at the bottom for your different positions you played. Uh, and that's as, pretty much as simple as it goes. You roll two six-sided dice, look for the result on the batter card. You don't get the results, you look at the pitcher card. Uh, and uh, so let's talk about the pros to fall classic baseball. Uh, just check in the chat here and uh, just see... Um, if anybody's cursing me out yet, most of our Stratomatic fans showed up after I went on my rant, so they'll have to go back and watch the beginning of this episode. I'm sure I'm going to hear about it, but whatever. Uh, so, Fall Classic, con, simple game system, very easy to understand and play. There is literally three pages of rules, and they're not really rules. They're basically just examples. If you roll this on this card, this is what happens, right? And it kind of goes through all the all the different things that are going to happen on your batter cards, and then it does the same thing on the pitcher cards. That's your rules. It just kind of goes through and says, well, if you roll this, right, and it shows an out, then you roll on the out chart. So you're going to be rolling two uh, six-sided dice. You'll also be rolling a 20-sided dice, which is kind of your modifier dice, all right? Your modifier dice uh, will show you, uh, again, you know, if, if there's a split value there, or if it's an out value, it'll actually give you your outs. So Fall Classic kind of does what we just looked at with APBA. Uh, where is it? Where based upon your different play situation... Uh, it's under here. It's, of course, under my cards, right? Uh, so, if you have a runner in first, right? Out chart, runner in first. Here's what happens. Here's your 1 to 20. You look at the 20-sided dice, and it gives you a result, right? So, same thing, uh, kind of APBA. It has a ch out chart, for every single one of your different base running situations. Uh, you just simply look at the 20-sided dice to find out what the out is. Uh, and it also, um, it does that in a very elegant way. Like, number one is always a ground ball back to the pitcher. So if I look at the 20-sided dice, just like APBA, we just talked about this. When you start learning the numbers, if I look at the 20-sided dice and it's a one, I know it's a ground ball back to the pitcher, right? Uh, number two. Two is a pop out, and then you look at the white dice to determine which position it popped out to. If it's a, if it's a six, he popped out to short. 
If it's a five, he popped out to third base. If it's a one, he popped out to the pitcher, et cetera, et cetera. So you start to learn the results just like you do in APBA the more you play the game. Uh, it's a very elegant, easy system. Uh, you also have stats. Oh, my God. This is like a godsend. Uh, let's see if I can find some good stats here for us to show you an example here, right? All right. So let's look at, uh, who is this? This is, uh, Cliff. Hmm, I don't know that. Oh, shut up, Alexa. Cliff, Cliff Brantley, right? If we look at his, uh, you can see they're, they got a range, an arm, and an error. If we go over the range, you notice it says 11, right? Range of 11, right? So that's what that 20-sided dice is for. If we have a range play and we look at the catcher, he has an 11. If we roll 1 through 11, he's made the play. Stats that actually make sense. I don't know how many games we've gone through so far that the stats just don't make sense at all. You have 80s and 90s and 100s. You have percentile dice rollers that don't use percentile chance of something happening. These actually make sense. If you have a 12 there, you know 1 through 12 is a good play. A 13 would be a 1 through 13. If it's a 5, 1 through 5. Same thing with error check. If it's an error check and I got a 3, 1, 2, or 3 is an error. Anything else, it's not an error. So you can quickly and easily not have to calculate and try to figure out and look at charts and stuff. All you have to do is look at the 20-sided dice and the number because it's all based upon that 20-sided dice. It's not a hard concept to do, but how many games have we gone through where they don't actually use, if they're using six-sided dices or 10-sided dices or percentile dice or 20-sided dice, they don't use the value based upon the dice. They give you some random stat number and then you look on a chart and look at the, where, what number you rolled on the dice and cross-reference it, which makes no sense whatsoever. If I give you a stat and you look at that stat value on a 20-sided dice, if it's that number or less, it's successful. Or it's, it's that stat. So if it's an error, one, two, or three, if I got an 11, it's range play, 1 to 11 is going to be a good play. I'm going to make the range on it, right? So stats, that makes sense. I mean, it, you would think every game we've gone through would have something so simple. Go back and watch, and you will see hardly any game that we've done so far have stats that make sense. It's not a hard concept, but it does a great job. Uh, once you get to know the numbers, again, just like APBA, uh, the play results get easier and easier and quicker and quicker and faster and faster. Uh, the other thing I really like about this game uh, is that we I kind of showed you this in the beginning, is that the pitchers are going to have three separate columns because whenever a pitcher enters a game, whether they're starting or they're coming in as a reliever, you're going to roll to find out if they're having a good day, an average day, or a bad day. If they're having a good day, you use column A. If they're having an average day, you use column B. And if they're having a bad day, you uh, can use column C. So very neat idea. The only other game that we've talked about so far that kind of has something like that was Status Pro Baseball with their pitcher's PB number, which some players use the variable where the you roll and find out whether that number goes up or down. I don't see a lot of players still using that. But this one is actually built into the system, which makes it a little bit different and unique. Because if you're counting on Araldos Chapman, you're like, oh, okay, don't worry. We got Araldos Chapman coming in the ninth inning. He'll be fine. We'll get this. He'll get to save. He can have a bad day. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, man, you know, we were putting all our eggs in one basket. So every time a pitcher comes in, you just never know if they're going to have a good day, an average day, or a bad day. Uh, and that can also determine how long you keep the pitcher in. If I bring a, oh, that's not a pitcher. Let's say, uh, bring in a pitcher and I roll. That's not a pitcher either. What the hell? Uh, give me a pitcher. Here's a pitcher. If I bring in a pitcher, 
right? He's having a bad day. Maybe I only leave him in for a couple batters and then take him out and bring somebody else in and see if I can get him to have a good day. Or I bring this guy in, he's having a good day. Maybe I leave him in a little bit longer than I should because he's having a good day. Uh, so that can actually uh, have some, you know, variable on how you actually use your players, which I think is a really neat and novel idea. Why do more games do something like that? If I'm missing something, let me know. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see. I'm just checking the uh, the uh, chat here for just a second. All right. Um, uh, you can also, when you purchase, whether you buy a printed copy, if you this is a PDF version that I bought very reasonably priced I think it was like 10 or 12 dollars not very expensive and you can see this is actually one team all right this is the 1992 Philadelphia Phillies right I'm gonna count up how many cards came in this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 67 cards that came with this set. Probably the most I have of any set that I own that came with this. So when you buy the $12 PDF of Fall Classic Baseball, you're getting every single solitary player that probably played an inning or a bat or whatever now there are you uh just keep in mind there are the pitchers do have a bat card some of the pitchers some of the pitchers have batting cards some of them don't if they had an actual if a pitcher had an it i think it's if a pitcher had five at bats and i could be the number might be wrong it might be 10 bats or whatever but if the pitcher had a at least 10 at bats then they have a batting card and they also have a pitching card so keep that in mind 67 cards but probably t maybe 10 to 15 to 20 of them are going to be pitcher cards that uh, are for the for the um uh, uh, batting cards for the pitchers, okay? And it's not just because the Philadelphia Phillies played a lot of teams, or a lot of players, right? This is the um, this is the Pittsburgh Pirates, right? So you can see these files are equal in size. It's not like one is skewed for, you know, because maybe the Phillies played a whole bunch of extra players that season or whatever. No, okay? Um, so you get a whole bunch of players for what you get. All right, but the reason I'm, I mentioned all that is... If you buy a printed copy from the designer developer, all right, you get the PDF for free, right? You get that for free. And you also get the helper file for free, which is an Excel file that basically has your season information built into it to help you play the game on the computer using Excel. It doesn't keep stats. It doesn't keep track of any anything other than your batting lineups, who's at bat. It lets you play the the Fall Classic game with, in Excel so you don't have to have the cards and dice on your table is all it does. If you want to have that on your on your computer and roll the dice yourself and then you know, give the results, look at the charts and then give the results and then just click the next batter, right? just so you don't have to have the cards out. You can do it. There's lots of ways to use the helper file. We've done some videos on the helper file, but if you order the printed copy, you get the PDF and the helper file for free. If you order the PDF, you can get the helper file. I think it costs you $5 more. So I think it was $12 for the PDF and then $5 for the helper file. Uh, and then you have access to both. But if you buy the printed copy, I think you get both of the printed copy or you get the uh, PDF and the helper file for free so think of that you order a printed copy 
you get the PDF version for free. Have we said that so far for about any other game that we've come across in our top, you know, we're now down to number four, so our top 12. We've never said that before, okay? That's why Fall Classic, when you start thinking apples, you start comparing apples to apples. Every time you get a positive, you you move it down a notch. And then every time you get a negative, you move it up a notch. That's why Stratomatic should be a lot higher than it ended up being because of all the negatives and the, the serious negatives that it has. Fall Classic, all right? Just good thing after good thing I have to say about this. Uh... There is a basic, uh, we, we showed you the boards, right? We showed you the boards that you can have, right? Uh, and this this goes for, see if I can find it here. Just give me a second. Hope everyone's having a great night. Uh, so it basically breaks all of these boards down into one sheet. This is your quick outs chart, right? So you have your quick outs chart. You have your easy runner advancement chart, which takes all of these other charts and breaks them down into one simple sheet, right? So you have this quick outs chart if you don't want to use all these other charts. Think of that, a designer that said, hmm, maybe some people out there, they might not want to use all these other charts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a chart that's going to combine all these into one simple thing for my players. Hmm, that sounds like a good idea. Let me create something like that. I mean... Basic common sense things. Why do all these all these other companies not think of that, right? Why why does it take some guy to do this when other gaming companies should be doing this stuff and they earn thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars from you and they don't do this? You get a guy that probably doesn't sell very many sets in a whole year, right? Very probably very few sets because his game isn't well known, or, you know, and he doesn't have the, the name recognition of a lot of other games, but he's out there going, hmm, what can I do to help my customers? I'm going to create a simple chart. So I got all my charts, all those, you know, all those other pages of charts on a simple two sided, two sided thing. All right, the last, uh, last pro with Fall Classic, and yes, we've gone through like eight, eight things in why, and you wonder why Fall Classic kept falling all the way down to number four. Uh, there are, in in the rule book where we talked about, there are many different advanced rules you can choose to implement or not choose to implement. So, you know, there's the rules, and then there's like, oh, if you want to add more variety, if you want to add more strategy, if you want to add something else, here's an advanced rule that you can use. There are probably, I'm thinking right off the top of my head, there's six or seven, maybe even eight additional strategy rules, again, to kind of let the players go, yes, I like this, I like this, and I like this, but I don't like that, so I'm not going to use it. So instead of just implementing everything in his game and saying, this is how you play my game, he created his game and said, you can also add in all these other different PC parts that you want to use. You don't have to, but you can choose whatever. You can add all of them in. You can just choose one of them. It lets the player play the way they want to play and have the most fun, right? It's common, simple things that make sense to us. Game designers, they don't understand this concept. Very few do. I'll just say that. Very few do. All right, now let's talk about the cons. Um, more variations on the pictures would have been good, right? So you can see, uh, if we would just look at one of the pictures here, we look at his different variations. You can see there's not a ton of variations, especially, you know, look at 41 are all walks, 42 are all walks, 43 are all walks, 44 are all walks. I'm sorry, 45 are all walks. Uh, you can see a little bit of variation there in 56. 61 is all the same, 62 is all the same, 63 is all the same, 64 is all the same, 65 is different though, uh, and then if we look at the top, 31 is the same, 32 is different, 34 is the same, 35 is different, and 36 is different. Now, of course, he's probably done that statistically to keep everything in line with, you know, you can't obviously have a really good day and a really bad day and have very many different, different variations, but I think there's enough to make it, you know, uh, interesting and different. You know, obviously, if I roll a 41, 
against this guy. It doesn't matter if he's having a good day, a bad day, or whatever. It's still a walk, right? So uh, more variations on the pitchers would have been nice. But again, I think because of statistical accuracy, he probably didn't want to do that. I'm just saying. Um, the little, the, uh, we talked about the quick outs chart, right? The quick out chart. Uh, you know, when we, we compare this, and I don't like comparing games between different companies or whatever. We talked about a game the other night uh, that had, like, literally seven pages of range, right? You're doing a range check. You're, run, you're looking through seven pages to get the results, all right? You can see that this is all those charts basically condensed down into one simple chart. But it can be a little bit confusing if you look at, you know, uh, if we look at, say, three over there, the first column says one in brackets, ADV slash one times two, uh, first base dash SDP, right? So probably to 90% of you, that's all Greek, right? There's a few of you that might be able to figure that out. But, you know, once you start understanding the results from the normal plays, you can look at that and go, oh, that's what that is. If you don't know what it is, all I have to do is look at that chart and say to myself, because it's basically just a breakdown of that chart, it says, uh, that's a runner on first chart, number three. All right, we're going to look at the first dice to find out whether or that's what the one is. We're going to look at the white dice and see if we, the runner is going to advance, right? And uh, then it's going to be a fielder's choice out at second. So if you look at that, one times two means out at second. And then it's going to say first base SDP, which means if the first baseman has a strong arm, it's a double play, right? So if we look at that on the actual out chart on runner first, that's exactly what it says. So once you understand the charts, you can kind of break down, but it's a little bit confusing. I mean, you know, we look at one advanced slash one times two, one uh, B dash SDP can be a little bit confusing, I admit. So, you know, uh, it just takes a little while to get used to that, but once it does, it's not too bad. Uh, bunting. Uh, bunting in this system is done a little bit different. Uh, what you're going to be doing is each player is going to be getting a rating from one to six. You're going to take a six-sided dice, and if you roll that number or less, it's a successful. Uh, it's a successful. He got the bat on the ball. Okay. Now what you need to do is roll it again to see if it's a successful. If he's got it in play, so you're going to roll whatever your sacrifice value. Or, yeah, your sacrifice value is you're going to roll it twice. The first time is to see whether you get bat on ball, and the second time is to see if you get it in play. So it's it's two six-sided dice you need to roll that are less than or equal to your number. If you roll a six on the first one, it's an automatic pop-up, and you know there's different rules for that and everything. So bunting's done a little bit different. Uh, so you're either going to really like it, or you might not like it at all because it's like, oh, I don't like that bunny rule or whatever. Um, you know, so it is done differently. You might, I, I think it's works out pretty, pretty good because it gives you, you know, bunting in most basic game, or most baseball games seem to be a little, a little, a little too easy, right? A little bit too easy. And we all know it's not as easy as it looks. You know, you got these th third baseman and first baseman crashing down on you all the time. Uh, the pitchers, you know, they're lucky to even get a bunt down anymore the way these guys crash down on the batters nowadays. Uh, so, you know, having to roll twice to get the, to get a good result uh, makes, makes it a little more strainful or more stressful on the player to say, oh, God, do I really want to try a sacrifice in this situation? And the last thing uh, kind of con for Fall Classic is that the hit and run chart is a little underwhelming. It's just, uh, you say, I'm doing a hit and run. Uh, you roll two six-sided dice, and you look up the chart result, uh, and, and that's pretty much what the hit and run, um, you know, it's just a two six-sided dice. You look to see what the number is. And for me, compared to everything else in the game, it just seems a little underwhelming. It just doesn't seem like it fits in with all the other the other uh, the way things are done in this game. So, um, so there you go. Uh, so that's uh, so that's Fall Classic number four.
Total value for Fall Classic Baseball 7.9. 7.9. Fall Classic Baseball. Fourth best game. That leaves us with three left. Three left. I have a lot of good things about to say about Fall Classic, as you can see. A lot of a lot of pros and not many cons. But there is still cons. Uh, like I said, there's no there's no really perfect game out there. And even our number one game, whichever one that happens to be is going to get some cons as well well there's only three left if you've been following along you've probably been knocking off and figuring out which ones are left and you know which ones are left if you don't well i'm not going to spoil it for you but there is three remaining and probably not the three if we started this all over again that most people would think that are remaining i'll tell you that especially our number three contestant here number three contestant slide this over hopefully not screw everything up but here it is it's national pastime next generation plus baseball which is basically uh an offshoot of the apba system with its own variations and rules all right so let's ask our four questions that we like to ask is there lefty righty splits built in? Yes. In this, National Pastime Next Generation Plus, no mods needed. Everything is built into the game system. All right. And you can see here on the pitcher, the pitchers have values versus left-handers and versus right-handers. As soon as I can get the damn thing to focus in again. There we go. Versus right-handers, there's a value there, 14. And versus left-handers, 26. So there will be certain play results that are colored in yellow. When those play results come up, that's a test on the pitcher to see if whether or not it's going to be a uh, hit or an out. And you're going to look at that value on the pitcher card uh, to see whether or not it's a hit or an out. So in Randy Jones' case from 1974 San Diego, Versus right-handers, he'd have to roll 14 or less for the out to happen. And versus left-handers, he'd roll a 26 or less versus lefties. Uh, so there is lefty-righty splits built into the actual card system on the pitcher's cards. Uh, can you buy a PDF version of the game? Again, this is kind of a trick question. No, you can't buy anything for this game because it is 100% free but yes you get the pdf you can download the pdf it's totally free so no you can't buy a version a pdf version of the game because it is free but you can get access to a pdf uh can i buy a printed copy of the game no there is no printed copies the designer developer does not uh you know have any access to you know, printing out season files for you. And then is there a computer version of this game of National Pastime Next Generation Plus? No. All right. Uh, if you if you like National Pastime Next Generation Plus, you can always go back to APBA and use their computer version, or you could use um, National Pastime 3, which is very another system that's very similar to APBA, but has their own rules and boards and charts and they have a computer version so no national pastime next generation plus computer version but these other two would be a good substitute if you are, are looking for something all right so basic flow of this game it, since it's an apba game i'm not going to go over the basic uh you know the basic concepts again for you players uh people out there it's basically the same thing you roll two six-sided dice you're going to get the results, result number, and then you're going to look at, um, you know, what these result numbers are going to give you. So 34 would be a 31. So a 31 is what a fly ball to center. A 35 is a 13. That's just going to be possibly a strikeout. So they do some things a little bit different than APBA. And the first thing you will see is all of your different. K values, your Z values, your Y values, all those different letter systems that APA normally has. This game has as well, but normally there are numbers. So like 
a K result is going to be like a K1 through 9. So you might have a K2, you might have a K4, you might have a K8, you might have a K9. So those K numbers will come into play. Uh, so, you know, the higher your number, the more chance you will have. Uh, you will see on some of the boards, it will say something like, see if I can get this without any glare. You can see there are 24s out to first, short stop to first base, unless you got a K6 through K9, then in that case, it's a strikeout. If it's a 25, you need to have a K4, a K5, a K8, or K9, and then it's a strikeout. If you have a 27, a K4, a K5, a K8, and K9. So a lot of variables on your pitchers, your Ws, your walk ratings also will have one to fives. Your Zs will and your Ys will have different play results. Uh, here's on the front, right? On your 14, it's a base on balls, and that's your Z3 or Z4. In that case, it's a two balls. Uh, and so, you know, the numbers are just as important in national pastime just generation. Uh, the numbers are just as important as the actual value, uh, whether you have that letter grade or not. So you can see in this case, uh, Randy Jones sees a K1, or I'm sorry, a K2 versus right-handers, a Z1 versus right-handers, a K3 versus lefties, a Z2 versus, he doesn't have a W there, he doesn't have a Y, he doesn't have an X, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how all that comes into play. All right. So let's talk about the pros for National Pastime Next Generation Plus. Number three game, unbelievable. Oof. Uh, I would have, you know, uh, as good as this game is, I, I'm not sure uh, that, you know, if, if somebody would ask me, well, what's your top three games? I would have listed this just off the top of my head. But the more I got to thinking and writing things down and looking at pros and cons of different games and everything, this one just kept, Falling, falling down the list until it got to number three. Uh, so, number one pro, there are many, many, many seasons available for free. I think there's somewhere around 86, 87, 90 seasons that you can all download for free. And they go all the way back to 1896, 1893, something like that. He just released a season set from uh, 1890-something. I can't remember if it's 96 or 94, 93 or whatever it is. So if you want to play that, that old, funky baseball and have all the players that played back then, National Pastime Next Generation Plus might be the game for you because I don't think you're going to get it in any other game system. Very few game systems, anyways, is going to have the, 19, the 1896 season available for you. But National Pastime Next Generation Plus does. So there are a ton of seasons available for you to play. Some seasons are not available in most of the games we've already covered. So kudos on them for you know, doing all that, and even all the way back to that dead ball, boring, you know, make more errors and runs type game. If you like that kind of game, you can play to your heart's content for free. I don't know if I mentioned this, but everything that this gentleman has created is a labor of love that he has released for free to the public. I actually got in contact with this guy after I came across National Pastime Next Generation Plus because I'm like, wow, this is a lot of stuff. And I wanted to actually like send this guy like a PayPal thank you and say, you know, great job on this. And, you know, here's a little bit of here's a little bit of money for you. He actually emailed me back and said, no, I, I won't take your money. I just your support is all I'm looking for. And if you can pass the word on to people, that's all I'm looking for. So this is, this is basically a labor of love. The guy wouldn't even take my money that I offered him because he doesn't do this for money. He doesn't do it for name recognition. He does this as a passion. Uh, his youth was spent playing cards and dice games. And now he wants, now that he's older, he wants to pass that on to the next generation. So, uh, Personally, you know, something, somebody like that, I am going to support uh, 
to the end in his uh, in his desires to do that. So everything that he does, labor of love, uh, and and he does it for free and gives everything for free, and he keeps uh, just keeps giving more and more. Uh, if you go to the website, just about every month there's something new added to the game. Uh, and you'll know it's new because it'll be like in red, bold text. It'll say, we now have the, you know, 1987 season with, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Um, the other th cool thing is you can get all the rules, all the charts, all the files, everything from one simple spot, right? You go to his website, you go to the download page, and you can just click and click and click and download as much and everything as you want for free there in one, you know, one easy spot. It's, it doesn't take very long. You can have literally 20 season files downloaded by the time I finish this review. If you went to his website right now, by the time I end this review, you can have 20 season files downloaded, ready to play for you for free. All right. Uh, he's constantly adding and updating stuff. Uh, he's changed in a format. He's he's added and changed now um, the way he used to do things. So the way he used to do things was he would create these files that you can download. And then this one happens to be the base dealing, right? The base dealing for each player for, for the season. So this is a 2017 season. It's a lot of pages, blah, 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 right? And so you would download this. And then it, you, if I was playing, say, Arizona, I would, I would look at the player's stolen base index and I would write it down on the card. And you will see, like Kevin Kilmeyer here, you can see that 25 there. That's his stolen base index that I got off of that chart. And I just wrote it down on my card because I'm like, okay, I don't want to have to keep looking this up. So I'm just going to go through and write down the numbers on the cards. All right. Well, the guy said, you know what? I can make it even simpler for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the stolen base index to the cards, right? So you can see there, SBI, which is a stolen base index, happens to be zero for this player. Uh, you can see here, uh, John Grubb here, if we look at his stolen base index, it's a 12. Once it zooms in there. So we actually, now you don't even need this, you don't even need this chart anymore. You don't need to print out 20 or 30 or 40 pages or whatever this is and look things up because he's actually said, you know what? I'm going to put these numbers. I'm going to find a spot to put it on the cards. And he's done the same thing with uh, some of the other variables and he updates the games and the cards uh, with these new, you know, oh yeah, you know what? It'd be a great idea if I just put that stolen base number on the, on the player card so that that's right there, ready to go. And if you go to the website, you can see there's probably five or six different season files now that have the stolen base index already on the card. Does all 90 seasons that he has have that on the cards? No, no, they, no, there's not. Okay, because this is one or two or three guys working on this project. They aren't they haven't gone through. They've only done like four or five or six seasons because they just they just started switching that over. So if you download the 1964 season, you're probably not going to have the SBI index on there yet because they haven't gone back and updated that season file. But it's constantly being updated with more stuff uh, to make things easier and better for the players. Um, the uh, stolen base index is on here now. And also there's something else and I'm trying to remember what it is. And when I see it, I'll remember probably, but I forget. So we'll just keep going without it. Uh, um, so, uh, so not only do you get the cards to print, you know, the season files, but you also, if you go to his website and down, you download, I would say there are almost as many season files as an Excel helper that you can download and play. So if you don't want to print out cards 
and cut them out and play cards and dice, but you want to play National Pastime Next Generation Plus, you can actually go and download the Excel file from his website for that season file. And it's, again, 100% free. As long as you have Microsoft Excel, you can play it. And it has built into the Excel file has every single game for that season with historic lineups already built into it. So if you wanted to play a game from April 2nd between the Minnesota Twins and the Detroit Tigers, you just simply click on the list and you click that and you say go. And it loads the lineups for you 100% ready to go. The helper file again, just like all these other helper files, they don't keep track of stats, they don't keep track of anything, uh, you know, player results or anything like that. That's all up to you to do. All it does is let you play the game without having to use the cards and dice. There's a dice roller in the program. There is a, um, there's actually, it will keep your progress as you play through the game on a sheet that you can upload to like the Delphi forums and post what happened in that game or whatever it has a it creates like a little uh, spreadsheet of the uh, of the game as you progress through it but it has every single game from that season file already programmed into the excel file for you to use not only that but you can download a blank one and you can actually import the teams if you want to create your own fantasy league. Maybe you want the 1980 Dodgers and the 1986 Dodgers and the 1989 Dodgers and the 2007 Dodgers and the 2017 Dodgers. And you want all them and you want them to play off against the, you know, 1947 Boston Red Sox and the 1947 uh, New York Yankees and the 1947 Minnesota or whoever Detroit Tigers and you can create you just import you just import the teams that you want and you create your own file that you have now of course it won't have historic lineups because you're creating a fantasy league, but you can create this own fantasy league. I've actually got a video on how to set up your own fantasy league and get it set up with, uh, I think it was six or eight teams on uh, each in, um, in each division. And then you can just choose those teams and play them off, set your lineups and you're ready to go. So if you're into that kind of thing and you, and you want to use the national pastime next generation system, but you want to have the 19, 50s take on the 1960s or whatever you want to do they actually have an excel file that you can download for free again to be able to do that and then uh, same thing same advantages national pastime next generation has that apba uh, and any of the offshoots have once you learn the numbers the easier it gets uh, you know you know a 13 now everyone should know a 13 is a strikeout a 14 is a walk and thus of course you have a z1 or z2 uh, as a pitcher and then it's just two balls instead etc cetera, etc cetera. this one's a little bit more complex because of those variables instead of just being a z or not a z you have a Z1, a Z2, a Z3, a Z4, a Z5. You have a X or a K1, K2, 3, J4, K5, K6, K7, K8, K9. All right. So that's actually one of my cons. So speaking of which, we'll talk about that is one of my cons is having the variable pitcher grades, aka K1 through K9, Z1 through Z5, uh, W1 through W5, et cetera, et cetera, means uh, you have to reference the pitcher card a lot more than you would in regular because, you know, they do have the lefty-righty splits. So are you going to remember that this guy is a K2 versus righties and a K3 versus lefties? It's going to take you a little while to remember that, right? Uh, 
And so, especially when you bring in a new pitcher, a new relief pitcher, you're not gonna you're not gonna remember that this guy is a 14 Z1 K2 versus right-handers and a 26 Z2 K3 versus left-handers. You're not gonna probably remember that unless you play this call this player's card a lot, right? Once you if you do play this player's card a lot and you can remember all that stuff, you're much better than me because I can't remember numbers worth crap. But if you're like me, you probably can't remember all this stuff as much as you'd like to. Uh, so you do have to reference the pitcher's card a little bit often. You know, I'll have the pitcher's card down and I'll look at the results, right? I'll look at the results and I'll say, uh, W4, does he have a W4? No, he doesn't have a W4. And then I'll get the results. If you use regular APBA or one of the offsuits or something like that, you don't have to worry if it's a W4. Is it a Z3? Is it a Z4? Uh, you know, is it a is it a K4, K5, K8, K9? Uh, no, it's a K2, so it's not a strikeout, right? So you do have to reference the pitcher card a little bit more than you would in the regular APBA system, uh, and so that that. You know, because of the complexity there, it can, uh, you know, cannot, it's not just as simple as is a 13 a strikeout or is 13 not a strikeout? Like APBA, everyone knows K, a 13 is a strikeout in this game. Uh, it is a strikeout unless you have a K1. But does he have a K1? I got to remember. Uh, no, he's got a K2. Okay, so, so in that case, I know, right? But there will be other results that you'll have to reference back on this. Another, obviously, another dig uh, deficit or, or con for National Pastime Next Generation Plus is the fact that you have to print and cut everything out yourself. Unless, of course, you use the Excel file and you don't want to print and cut. You want to play National Pastime Next Generation Plus, but you don't have uh, access uh, to printers. You don't you don't want to spend the time cutting out cards. Uh, you know, we took if we look at how many cards there are for a team, right? So this is 2007 Tampa Bay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. So I have 51 players from that file that I downloaded for free. So you're getting just about single every single player that played for your teams. It's you know, you know, you don't have to buy extra player files. And not get all the extra players because of course this is all free anyways right but it just the guy went through and he's like well if i'm going to release the 2017 season i want to release it with everyone why why would i not want to release it with everyone i mean you know common sense stuff for us gamers out there right but game designers game companies whatever for whatever reason right releases 51 51 players for free, so it's not like you get. Oh, you're, I'm just going to give you the the basic 20 play, players that played, and maybe you know top 10 pitchers or something. You're getting everyone. You're getting everyone for free. Uh, and then uh, as another, uh, so variable pitcher grades means you have to reference you have to re reference the, uh, the pitcher card a little bit more than you would normally because of the variable numbers, right? Uh, you must print and cut it all out yourself, right? So if you're not a printer. You're not a cutter, you know, National Pastime Next Generation Plus might not be the card and dice game for you. You can always use the Excel file if, if that might be interesting to you. But, you know, if you don't want to cut and print cards, obviously, you know, you're you're not uh, going to be able to play because you can't order uh, you can't order a print copy of this. And this, of course, you want to buy my season file, 2017 season file, which I'm selling for one hundred and sixty dollars. If you want to buy that, let me know. Send me an email. Uh, and then last but not least, the other con is uh, because it's just a couple, it might only be one guy, it might only be a couple guys uh, that are working on this. When they implement anything new, 
It takes a while to obviously go back and update everything that they've done in the past. So when they implemented the new stolen base index on all the players' cards, there's only like four or five seasons that already ha that have the stolen base index file on there because they haven't gone back and updated all 9,000 season files that they have for all the other seasons. So it takes a while for all this stuff to update and process through. Uh, like I said, I think it's a one or two man team that are doing all this. So with, with the update, which I love, the stolen base index, I think there's only like four or five season files that have been updated to the new stuff. But uh, kudos for them trying and adding that stuff because it does, I mean, it does make it a little bit easier uh, to be able to then, then me going around and saying, okay, if I'm going to play Tampa Bay, I'm going to break down all my stolen base indexes on my player cards. So Langoria is a 15, Morrison's a 12, Sousa's a 21, Dickerson's a 33, Miller's a 32. You know, so I've done that on some of these, and it doesn't take very long to do, but it'd be easier for me if it had that information on the bottom of my card. So the 2018 does have that. Uh, and there's, like I said, a few other seasons that do, but it does take a while to update all those new things and go back when you have 90 to 100 other season files. It's going to take a long time before all those get updated, unfortunately for us. But National Pastime Next Generation Plus, number three game, I'm giving it a solid 8.0 final score. National Pastime Next Generation Plus, baseball, 8.0. Number three game. Uh, who is the creator of National? I would have to look at my email. I've been in contact with him uh, in the past. I don't recall his name right off the top of my head. Um, it's been a while since I actually talked to him, but uh, um, I'd have to go back and look through my email. So. All right, um, I'm just looking back to see who's talking bad about me in the chat. That's all. Find out who sticks out, who doesn't. Uh, Bill Staffa. That does that name does sound familiar. APBA. Bill Staffa. He goes. I think he goes by William. Is William something? But maybe because his name is Bill, he goes by William. That's a possibility. That is a great possibility. I could look back in my emails. Uh, email me, APBA Chatter, if you want to know. And um, uh, let me know. So number three game. Again, uh, kind of a surprise to me that, but when you, you know, start looking at when you're giving games rankings based upon what they do uh, and what they do well, and you know all the bonuses freeness right you got to give a, a game a couple points for just being free for including all the players i mean how many games have we gone through so far you don't even get all the freaking players half of the baseball games that we've gone through so far you don't get all the players so just having all the players for the team makes you a better game than half of the other games already, just by that one fact, right? Uh, having an Excel file, uh, constantly updating and, uh, and adding things, having 100 season files, compare that to some of the other games that don't have that, makes you a better game right off that. <coughs> I'm going to get a drink for a second, so... All right, so we got our, and then there was two. And if you've been following along, you know what the two games remaining are. So what I'm going to do is, before I introduce game number two, if you've been following along, you know which two games are remaining, I want you to write in the chat which game you think number two is. If you haven't been following along, you have no idea. That's fine, too. But if you haven't been following along and narking off which, which games we've used, which ones we haven't, if you know which game is number two, put it in the chat, and I'll give everyone a minute before I introduce game number two. 
Wow. We have uh, Tom Usher thinks it's inside pitch. Uh, Glenn says it's inside pitch. James says it's payoff pitch. Baseball Demos says it's inside pitch with payoff pitch being number one. Tom also thinks payoff pitch is number one. Sports Time Machine says inside pitch. And Don Hedson says inside pitch is going to be number two. Well, you guys think you know me. You guys think you know me. Hmm. Are you, do you think you know me? Or do you really know me? That's a good question. Our number two game. Number two game. Payoff pitch. Payoff pitch, number two game. All right, I, I couldn't do it. All right, I couldn't do it. Damn, I thought I had you fooled. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. You're right, you do know me. You do know me. Very well, very good, my friends. You are correct. Inside pitch is our number two game, which makes payoff pitch our number one game. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Inside pitch baseball, we'll talk about our four questions again. Is there lefty righty splits? Uh, yes, 100% of the game is based upon the lefty-righty splits. Uh, all the cards, all the rules, everything is lefty-righty. Uh, can you buy a PDF version of the game? Yes, the PDF version of the game is. Uh, this is the PDF version of the game, so you can buy those. Uh, can you buy a printed copy of the game? Yes, you can buy a printed copy of the game. And is there a computer version of this game? Yes. I believe... With all 16 games that we have done so far, this is the first and only time our four questions we answered yes to every one of them. Is there lefty righty splits? Yes. Can you buy a PDF version of this? Yes. Can you buy a printed copy of this? Yes. And is there a computer version of this game? Yes. This, I believe, is the only game that we answered yes to every one of those questions. Yes, 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 and yes. Boom. All right, so uh, just a breakdown. If you're unfamiliar with Inside Pitch, uh, we're going to find the, you're going to go to, you're going to go to the pitcher's card. You're going to roll on the pitcher's card. You're going to roll two six-sided dice and a 20-sided dice. Two six-sided dice and a 20-sided dice. You're going to cross matrix two six-sided dice. And as soon as this thing decides to not be stupid, there we go. So if I roll a 1-1, one, one, that's a K result. If I roll a 2-5, that is a, um, it's a uh, at symbol. If I roll a 4-3, that's an RP. Each one of those things are going to give you different values. All right. Uh, based upon what you roll on the pitcher's card, you may or may not get a final result. If I roll a 1-1... One, one, I'm going to look at the 20 sided dice and it's going to be a check to see if the batter has a K number that is greater than or equal to that value. Let me get a batter here. Can I find a batter? That would be super cool if I could find a batter. Batter, 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 swing, batter. Here we go. No, that's pitchers. Uh, yeah, here's a batter. Let's get somebody halfway decent though. Uh, do, 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 oh, he sucks, uh, we'll go Dexter Fowler, he's, he's awful, but whatever, uh, so you can see Dexter Fowler here, and Dexter, where's Dexter, here we go, so once it zooms in on Dexter, all right, there we go, so Dexter Fowler, you can see versus left-handers and versus right-handers is K result, versus lefties is a 12, Versus a right-handed pitcher, he's a 10. So if I roll 1 to 12 versus a left-handed pitcher, it's a strikeout. 
If it's a uh, right versus a right-handed pitcher, it's a one to ten. He's a strikeout. A walk rating again one to fourteen versus lefties, one to twelve versus right-handers. Uh, so you're going to look at your pitcher, see if you get a result. You might end up with a blank. If you roll a blank, then you're going to roll on the, the batter's card. And again, two six-sided dice, cross-reference the matrix. Sometimes you'll get uh, other results, like RP stands for range play, which means you're going to roll on the batter's card, but it's going to be a range play on that card. Uh, you might have something like a home run question mark, when, in which case you're going to look to see if the pitcher has that value in there. So home run question mark. Versus left-handers, it's a 1 to 19. Right-handers, a 1 to 19. So if I roll 1 to 19 on the 20, then it falls within that category. And then I'm going to roll to see if I get the home run off of the batter's card. So that's kind of what you're doing. You're going to roll on the pitcher card if you, to see if you get a final result. Uh, if you don't get a final result, you're going to roll on the batter's card. And then you'll get your final result from there. So that's kind of what you're doing. And it's all 100% 50-50 splits. All righty. All righty. So uh, let's talk about the pros. Um, I, for me, the pitcher batter interaction is one of the best out there, right? So you're looking at the pitcher, but not it doesn't 100%. Like a K doesn't mean it's an automatic strikeout, right? Because you still have to look at the value. So your batter still has something to do with whether or not it's a strikeout. Your pitcher doesn't go, oh, that's a strikeout, you're out, right? It's a, oh, it's a possible strikeout. we got to look and see, is that a strikeout or not? So they both have, they work in this inter, intertwining web of looking at this player, but checking his stats, or checking this player and looking at his stats. Uh, so they have this constant back and forth, which I think is super, super good. One of the best ways to do it, uh, in my opinion, is probably the best batter pitcher interactions some people might not think that way but for me the pitcher batter interactions it's not just get a result off of this card or get a result off of this card it's a it's a possible this but i have to look at this value or this is a possible but i have to look at this guy's values so there's this great inner weaving between the batter and the pitcher so definitely a pro if you if you don't like the 50 50 system where it's like oh this player gets the result or this player gets the result. You want something that has a little bit more, oh, it could be this, but I have to check this guy. Or this one, it could be this, but I have to check this guy. If you want a little bit more of that interaction between them, inside pitch does it, I think, in one of the best ways out there. All right, so definitely a con there. I'm sorry, definitely a pro there. Um, number two for pros, you can download free extra player files yes I, I know i i probably just gave like five or six heart attacks out there because there's people out there that are just stumpified but yes you can download for free i'm going to say this slow so you guys that are having a stroke out there can understand me and comprehend me you can download the free excel file and it has all the extra players that you don't No, no no put your credit card away put your credit you don't need to pay for this no no what what's that yeah no you get all of the extra players it's it's up to you you can download and print them all out or you can print out just some of it no it's up to you i i understand i i i know i know i i calm down sir calm down i understand you're not used to this, and and it's throwing you for a loop. And I'm just call, deep breath. You can download. Yes, we we have it here for free. You just you just click on the click it on on the download part. You see where it says download, sir? Yes. Click on that. Save the file. Put it in your computer. And no, no there's no password to open it up. No, sir. I don't. I don't need your credit card for this. This is this is us giving back to our customers for free. So, y yes, yeah. yeah. No, no. You you can download it multiple times. You're not restricted to just once. 
There's no password or anything. Yes, you, you can download it multiple times. All, all the season files, yeah. Yeah, you can, you can go through all of them and download them all. You don't own the 1980s season. Uh, this, that's fine. We don't care. It's free. It's available to you. You still want to download the 1980s season just to have the players, but you don't own the season file. That's, that's fine, sir. No, it doesn't cost you anything. Seriously. It, no. This is not a trick. This is not a trap. I'm not after your credit card information, sir. Hmm. Okay. Whew. All right. I did a full 1989 Bo Jackson replay using the computer version, not the card and dice, the computer version of Inside Pitch. At the end of that, I went through all of my stats. So if you've not seen that episode and you want to check out the stats and see how accurate things were from Inside Pitch, go watch video number 162, Kansas City 1989 season replay. Uh, if you, uh, uh, spoiler alert, I will kind of tell you what to expect. It was me being flabbergasted by how close the stats were. I had eight or 10, 12 players that had exactly, and I'm talking exactly the same batting average that they had in real life. 264 average, 264 average. 273 average, 273 average. 301 average, 301 average. I had another 10 or 12 players that were within one or two points. Don't believe me? Go watch it. Game 162 at the end of the completion of that. We go back and we look at all the stats. ERAs, pitching, batting, whatever. We look it up. 162 games we played. Now, of course, the only, the only stats we kept were of the Kansas City Royals. So, for me... I don't know how the inside pitch does it, but the stats were very, very close. Bo Jackson did not have as many home runs as he did in real life, uh, but there were the batting averages and the ERAs were very, very close for a lot of the players. A lot of the players. Go watch it if you don't believe me. Uh It's a fast, fun, easy game to play. Very few chart lookups. This is it. All right. This is a file. Okay. I, everyone, turn your pa pacemakers off for a minute because I'm going to tell you something that's going to freak you guys out for a minute. So, Inside Pitch creates a huge document, a huge how to play the game document because it's a pretty involved game. It's 40, 30 or 40 pages long. Well, a fan of Inside Pitch said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to take those rules. I'm going to condense them down into all the important things we need to know about your game. And he sent them to the designer and developer and said, hey, I just, I went through and I, I, I went through the rules and I created these, these sheets based upon what you had in the game and and uh, I'm sending them to you you know just you know in case you want them the guy that designs and develops the game what did he do with that he takes it and posts it on his website for free we just talked about this with uh, APBA number five game not too long ago if I'm a designer developer and somebody goes through and says hey I've taken all your rules and I've condensed them down into two important chart pages. Here you go. Here they are for free. What am I going to do with them? I'm going to post them, right? Smart designers, smart developers, and people that care about their customers, they don't go, oh, let's keep this in the underground now. You know, we don't want anybody getting a hold of those files. We don't want to, we don't want to get it out. We don't want anybody knowing about this stuff. This is between me and you and Uncle Joey. <coughs> so, two, two, two sheets. 
That's all you have. And this sheet is just your error and range checks. You're basically one sheet to play this game. And then this, which I you don't need, but I think it's a good helper file. Because if you have this down in front of you, all your base running decisions made uh, are outlined on this. Plus, you can keep track of your score and everything else. You may or may not want to use this, but it's worth it, you know, uh, having around. So you may or may not use this, but basically one sheet, or if you, you know, when the error comes up, you need the second sheet, right? Wow, I know. Turn your pacemaker, turn your pacemakers back on now. Uh, the other thing is the play results are going to come right off of the player card. So if I, you know, if I get off the, if I get on the um, pitcher card and I get a result, it comes off the card. I know what the result is. If it comes off the batter card, it comes off the batter's card. I know what the result is. It's a fly out to center. It's a double. It's a home run. It's a strikeout. It's a uh, hit by pitch. It's a pass ball. Whatever the result is, I don't have charts to look up. I don't need to find anything because it's right on the cards. I know. I know. Yes, we understand. It's a foreign concept for a lot of game manufacturers out there, game designers, whatever it happens to be. A concept, something as simple as put the results on the cards, don't have players go and look them up somewhere else because they can see the result right there in front of their eyes. Makes the game flow really quick and easy because I'm not looking up charts. I'm not looking up things. I got the result right here. It's either going to come on the pitcher card or the batter card, but you're going to have the result of the play right there. All right, let's talk about cons. Let's talk about cons. Base running advancement can take a while and it can take a while to understand the process because there's a different process when you get a ground ball that goes through short or through second or down first or down uh, third baseline. And there's a different result or there's a different procedure used when you get a single that lands in the outfield. And there's two different ways to handle these. That's why I was mentioning this here because it kind of outlines it for you in a quick and easy format. So if I hit a ground ball, right, past the second baseman, I need a three to six to advance. That's my base running. I need a total of three to six uh, a speed to advance. So if I have a five speed and there's no other adjustments, my five fits between the three and six, so I get to advance an extra base, right? So it gives, it kind of outlines your different options for you because the base running for me in this game, uh, the base running advancement uh, takes a little while to be good at and it takes a little while to understand. You're gonna have to play a few games, understand the base running advance, and understand how to use the charts. Again, it's all it's on the charts, right? It's on the charts. Base running advancement, chart here, chart here, chart here, right? So uh, what you know, it takes a little while to understand how the process does because you're like, well, wait a minute, do I roll one dice or am I rolling two dice on this to find out if I got if I advance or not, uh, you know, so yeah, it can be a little confusing. I will say that, uh, and it does take a few games for you to get good at it. And it's going to take you a few games to be good at it. I'm telling you that. All right. Uh, where's my cards? Where are my cards? Oh, there. All right. Uh, another con for some people would be that this game, if I'm the pitcher and you keep rolling 1-1, one, one, it's going to be a possible strikeout time after time after time after time after time. So I can have, I can have the best lineup in the world, right? But if I keep rolling those results for you, like for example, let's see if he's got a good result for me. Uh, let's see if I can find a pitcher that would have a good result. There we go. Daniel Ponce de Leon, all right? Daniel Ponce de Leon. All right. All right. If you look at three row, 
uh, column three, number five, you see the double star. Right? The double star represents an automatic out. So if you roll three, five, doesn't matter who's up to bat, he's out, right? He's automatically out, and then there's a there's a one through six. You look at those six-sided dice to find out which one of these six it was the out, all right? But he's automatically out. So if you keep rolling those auto out results, it doesn't matter if you have Babe Ruth and Tim Tom uh, uh, Ted Williams up or uh, you know um, anybody else. Doesn't doesn't matter who's up to bat because if you keep rolling those auto outs, it's an auto out. It doesn't, it doesn't go to the batter card at all. So that can be, <coughs> uh, you know, when you're talking about like a game like Stratomatic, which is 50-50-50, you always have a fair chance of, yes, it might come off of my card, but yeah, it might come off of your card. But there are certain situations in inside pits where if you get these auto outs, <coughs> excuse me, hmm. Uh, let's find Ponce de Leon again. Where did he go? Uh, 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 or Dakota Hudson. We'll just use Dakota Hudson. All right. Again, Dakota Hudson. He's got an auto result out in uh, number column five, row number two, the double star there. So if I roll a double star, it's an auto out. It doesn't matter who's up. Ted Williams could be up. If, if Ted Williams, every time he comes up, if I roll a 5-2, he's going to be out. There's no 50-50 chance of it coming off of his card or not coming off his card. You always look at the pitcher's card first. If you don't get a result there, then you go to the batter's card. Some people might accept that. Some people may not accept that. But that's how this game is played. So keep that in mind. Uh, another con for inside pitch is like what we just talked about is you're rolling on the pitcher card, and if you don't get a result, then you're rolling in the batter card. So to get a result, unlike, say, APBA or some of the other, um, uh, like, uh, roster card or um, an even deep drive baseball, where you roll a dice and you're going to get a result, in, in the inside pitch, you roll a dice and you might not get a result, and then you go to the batter card to get your result. So sometimes you'll be rolling once, but a lot of times you'll be rolling twice. So you don't get a result every time you roll off the pitcher card. So you've got roll, nope, roll again. And then you might roll, nope, roll again. Oh, roll, nope, roll again. So you can be double rolling to get it out. Uh, there's, you know, if that's a if that's a problem for you, just keep that in mind. It just, uh, you know, if you don't get the result off the pitcher card, you got to roll off the batter card. So sometimes you're double rolling to get a result. And then, you know, you roll for the pitcher. Nope. And you roll for the batter. And now you've got a variable where you need to roll again, whether it's a range play or an error check or, you know, something like that, where you might need to roll a third time to get a result uh, to finalize the play. So it can, you know, sometimes it's just a one roll and you're done. Boom, move on. Sometimes it's two rolls. Sometimes it's three rolls. So if you want to run roll all the time to get your result, this is not the game for you because it's not going to happen all the time. And then last but not least, and hopefully uh, uh, Baseball Demos is still here. Because I specifically added this one in because of what baseball demos experience with inside pitch. And that is some of the cards in inside pitch don't seem to match real life stats. Okay. So what I'm saying is uh, if you look at a player and they've got, you know, a 1 to 19 chance of hitting a home run, then you expect that player to have lots and lots and lots of home runs, right? Well, if you're going back and look and he's only got, say, six home runs all season, then you got to wonder, wait a minute, why is he a 1 to 19 on his home run if, if he only hit like three or four or five home runs the whole season? Now, I haven't come across this, but I know Baseball Demos did a video on it. You might want to check that out for yourself at Baseball Demos. He did an, an episode where he was comparing some of his players with um, 
uh, Stratomatic cards to see which card was more accurate representing the player's actual skills for the season. And some of the card values in Inside Pitch seemed like they were just generic cards. They did not have all of the proper stats. It was just set up for, you know, you would think like a generic player would be, you know, if I'm rolling a 20-sided dice, a 1 to 10 would be a home run. A 1 to 10 would be a strikeout. A 1 to 10 would be a walk. A 1 to 10 would be hit by pitch. You know, I'm average at everything, right? And there were several players that he came across that had just had average everything. But when you looked at the actual player, they weren't average at everything. Okay? So uh, I haven't experienced this. David for sure has because he's done a video on it. And I don't know if anybody else has experienced that or not. But I thought I would bring it to everyone's attention that, uh, you know, uh, are, um, you know, they're, there could be a problem with the season file that maybe David ordered or what are the, the printout of the game. You know, I, I don't know what the issue was. Uh, I told I told the baseball demos to contact the designer developer, let him know and see what he has to say about that. Uh, you know, we certainly don't want to spend our hard earned money on a game and find out that some of the players weren't carded properly. They were just set up as like just generic player, you know. Oh, I got a 1 to 10 on every single one of my stats. Wow, yay me. Hardly ever are you ever going to find somebody that's going to be 1 to 10 in everything, right? 1 to 10 in every single stat is a little weird to come across. Because you're going to have average home runs, average steal, average walks, average hit by pitch, average everything, not there's hardly ever going to be somebody like that. And to find three or four cards that have those same stats on them is a little weird. So I'm not sure that they got carded wrong. If the, the process the designer used to create the cards didn't work on those, the cards, uh, you know, that's why I told them to get a hold of the designer and developer. So anyways, some of the cards don't seem to match the real life results. Go check out Baseball Demos. His video will explain it better. But for me, number two game Inside Pitch Baseball number two, 8.4. And we're almost done, folks. We are almost done. That's right. We go to the big boys. We go to the big boy. Top dog in the neighborhood, at least this year, it's going to be Payoff Pitch. Number one baseball game, in my opinion, based upon the following statistics and reasons. All right, so first off, first four questions, is there lefty righty splits? Yes, it's 100% built into the game. Can you buy a PDF version of the game? Yes. Can you buy a printed copy of the game? Yes. And is there a computer version of this game? Sadly, no, there is not at this time. Not at this time. There is no computer version of this game. We would like to see a computer version of this game uh, eventually. Uh, if it's done properly and it's not out to take their customers. Um, so the basic premise behind Payoff Pitch for you guys that have never played or are not familiar with this game at all. Uh, you're going to roll uh, two six-sided dice and you're going to roll two... 10 sided dice the six sided dice are going to get compared together and you're going to add them up and you're going to get a number between 2 and 12 that number comes off of the pitcher in this case we have dan straley here if we roll a two it's a wheelhouse check if we roll a three or four it's a patient check a five or six is a tough check a seven is a ballpark check an eight is a tough a nine and a ten is an in play an 11 is a defense and a I'm sorry, 11 is a patient and 12 is a defense. So you're going to get your play res, uh, check off of your pitcher. All right? And then the two percent down dice, you're going to look at the batter's card, and you're going to check versus left-hander or versus right-hander. In this case, Dan Straley is a right-hander. That's what the R is. So he's a, a right-hander. So versus Ozzy Albies, I'm going to look on the versus right-handed column under the situation that we just rolled. If it's a wheel check, a wheelhouse check, a patient check, a tough check, 
or an in-play check. Those are going to be your four default plays. Your wheelhouse, patient, tough, and in-play. Your other ones you might get once in a while are ballpark or in uh, defense. So you might get a ballpark and a defense. In that case, you're going to go to the... Do, 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 do. Each team has their own individual... Hmm, if I can find it. Really? Really? You're going to really do that? There we go. Each one has their own individual card. Each, each team has their own individual card. This one is the 2018 Atlanta. So if I roll a wheelhouse, or I'm sorry, if I roll a... Um, ballpark check I'm going to roll again to see if it's a wheelhouse or an in-play check and if I'm rolling a defensive check I'm going to check on the one of my defenders so these aren't actually on the cards we'll show you how to do these in a little bit so that's the basic premise is you're going to roll on each of the pitchers two six-sided dice you're going to get either a patient a tough an in-play or a wheelhouse check if it's a ballpark check, you're going to roll on the ballpark card to find out if it's, it ends up being a wheelhouse or an in-play. And then a de defensive check, you're going to check uh, your defensive player position to see if he makes the play or not. And again, they're going to roll percentile. So 0, 1 to 100. And if the play is in the number there, so let's go to uh, versus right-handed uh, right pitchers. Let's say roll a, six, a 56 versus a right-hander. You can see in the tough category, which is the blue one, 1 to 40 is a strikeout. 41 and 42 is a double. 43 and 46 is a single. So if it's not in there, then you're going to check the out result on the right-hand column or the right-hand chart. And a 56, you can see down there in the middle, is an L6, which is a liner too short. And you're just going to do that over and over and over again. Uh, see what your, but how your pitcher handles the batter, then find out how the handle the pitcher the batter handles the pitcher, over and over and over again. All right. Uh, so yes, so uh, lefty righty splits. Yes, you can buy a PDF. Yes, you can buy a printed copy. And no, there is no computer game at this point. So let's talk about the pros. Number one, and this has got to be said. This has got to be said, right? These are the best card quality cards out there, in my opinion, right? We talked about the paper cards. These are super, super slick. There is no sticking together. I can thumb through these as fast as my little hands can go. There's no sticking together. There's no, you know, if I wanted to separate them like a deck of cards, right, and look at them. Right? There's no sticking together there. These cards are top, top, top quality cards. Uh, I couldn't believe it because I had actually started printing out Payoff Pitch, and I had three or four seasons I printed out. And I had some players uh, email me and say, Hey, ID Jester, uh, you should order a set. They're pretty nice cards. I like them. So I finally broke down, and when I got my cards, holy blow my brain out these cards are nothing like APBA or uh, Stratomatic or uh, you know if you use uh, National Pastime Next Generation when I'm doing my own cards you know it, they don't flow as smooth as these cards do top notch thick thick you hear that that's a solid thump it's not a little wimpy that's a solid, solid thumb. Thick card, right? I don't know. You can't really see the thickness, but that's the thickness of it. And and no problem sorting cards, right? No problem. I, I can I can do this with all, all the cards, right? I mean, you can just I'm just gonna sit here and just I don't have any. They're not sticking together. There's no individ. They're all individually grabbed. There's no problem with them whatsoever. And that. Speeds up the game when I don't have to try and separate cards that are stuck together, right? If Payoff Pitch can come up with the, the quality and card that they do, 
some of these other game manufacturers out of here that make 20 times what Payoff Pitch does, and they have twice as bad to five times as bad quality that Payoff Pitch can afford, you tell me if you're getting ripped off as a customer then. All right. Great quality. Top notch. Uh, you know, when you, what goes along with that is uh, quality versus price. What are you getting for what you pay? All right. I did a video a while back where I compared Payoff Pitch's cost to uh, some of the other game companies out there. And for the cost, I'm getting almost every single player that played uh, for the team, right? I'm getting almost every single player, uh, which is like, uh, I think it was uh, 1,280 cards that come in the set, somewhere around there, 1,100 to 1,280 cards that came in the 2018 set. Uh, and then he does sell a extra players file or disc uh, that you can get all the remaining players if you want to. And those are your really far and in between players. I think it uh, was like another, uh, I think it was like another 200 players or something like that. But it, that basically. That gives you every single player that ever did anything in 2018 ever, right? So the cost, very reasonable for the quality you're receiving. You're not getting, you know, I think the season files run about um, 40 to $45, depending on which season you order. And you're getting 11 to 1,200 or more cards for that. $10 for your, 10 that's right, $10 for your extra player cards. Uh, not 30, not 40, not 50, 10. Yes, that's right, $10, the $10 bill. One followed by a zero, right? Uh, you get all your extra player cards if you want to. You don't even need those because you're getting a almost a complete set without those. Um, so... Great quality for what you're paying. $43, I'm getting 1,200 cards. Compare that to the 800 you get with some of the other game companies that you spend 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s dollars and more, right? And you compare the qualities. Um... Great pitcher batter interactions. Great pitcher batter interactions we talked about. The pitcher is going to kind of give you a detail. Uh, you know, uh, this one's going to be a tough one. It's going to be tough for this guy. And this one, uh, if, how patient is this guy? Is he uh, is he patient or not? Um, this one is kind of, I'm going to, you know, this one wasn't pitched where I need to. Can you get this one in play? Or, oh, man, I screwed this pitch up. It's in a wheelhouse. What are you going to do with it? So your pitcher kind of gives you an idea of what happens, and then the final say goes to the batter. How well does he handle what you what you gave him? Just because he got a wheelhouse doesn't mean it's home run. you got to still make the play, right? So you have this interaction. Your pitcher basically tells you how easy or tough your bat, your, your at bat's going to be, and then your your, your batter needs to step up and do, you know, the best he can to make that play for his team. So you can get wheelhouse, wheelhouse, wheelhouse checks, but if your players don't, your batters don't make the play, you're going to get out, out, out. Even though you threw three pitches down the middle, you can still end up with out, out, out. If the players do make the play, you can end up with home run, home run, home run. So it's all up to the interaction between those. If I do a tough play, you know, 40 to 50 to 60% of the time the players are going to strike out. Can they somehow, some way, take that tough play and get an actual result off of it? So for um, Ronald Acuna, or Ozzy Albies on a tough play, he's only got, he's got a 41 and a 42. is a double. So he's got a 2% chance to make that happen, a double. 
and then versus a uh, 43, 44, 45, and 46. So he's got a 4% chance to get a single. So he's got a total of 6% chance to make a tough play happen. But he's got to step up to the plate and make that play happen for his team. He needs to do that. Uh, you know, each 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 card, each player is, is specifically different. So there's a good interaction between the players. How how well is your pitcher? If you, if you keep rolling tough after tough after tough after tough after tough, it's going to be very hard for the batters to get anywhere. But if you throw in lollipops, wheelhouse, 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 it's going to be very easy. But So you got the interaction, but you still, and even if you're throwing tough pitches, the batter still has to finally say, can I fight this off and make a play? If you're throwing lollipops down the middle, the wheelhouse checks, the batter still needs to make the play. He, if he doesn't make the hit, he's going to be out. So he's still got to do it. So there's this really good batter, pitcher uh, it, um, interaction between one another. Um... Uh, to get the play results right off the batter's card. Again, if it's a single, double, triple, home run, or if it's an out, it tells you what kind of out is it. Is it a pop-up to second? Is it a ground ball to the pitcher? Is it a line drive to the shortstop? Is it a fly ball to center field? All the results come off the card, which obviously helps speed up the game. Um... But all the all the results, there's no other chart lookups. <coughs> Excuse me, for your outlook, it tells you what happens with the out. Uh, there is a super nice, highly recommend fast action deck that you can use. If you don't want to use dice, you want to use a fast action deck. You know, you can flip up the card and go, okay, what what you know, what. He rolled a three, and the batter rolled a 72, and that's an out. Okay, next batter rolled a six, and the batter rolled a 91. That's going to be a ground. That's going to be a fly ball to left, and then it's an eight, and eight is tough, and that's a zero seven. That's going to be a strikeout. So you can use the fast action deck, uh, not only for your dice results, but you can also use it for find out your base runner advancement on singles, on doubles. You know, is the runner going to go from first to second, or is he going to come into score, or go first to third? Is the runner on second? Is he going to score on a single, on a double? How many bases are going to get? When you're doing these defensive checks, what kind of defensive check is it? Is it a uh, in this case, it happens to be a range play to the second baseman. If it's a, uh, if you're under your defensive, if it ends up being a hit, what kind of hit is it? If it's an error, what kind of error does it happen? If it's an out, what kind of out happens? If you're trying to sacrifice, what kind of sac what kind of um, uh, chance, or is he successful in his sacrifice bunt or not? And then stealing, is he successful in his steal? So almost everything that you need. Result-wise, can be accessed from these fast action cards. So if you wanted to play with fast action cards, you could. You can play with dice, or you can use a combination thereof. So you can use these on certain plays. Co check out Combat Painter again. He plays a lot of payoff pitch. You can use the fast action when you want to just use your um, runner advancements and your defensive checks. And then you want to roll the dice for the rest of it. Or however you want to do, you can have any combination thereof. But definitely, uh, I highly recommend, again, these are not just, these are solid, thick, nice cards. Uh, customer service. Customer service is one of the best games out there. All right. I think I got attacked by a fly. Did you see that? Um, so I ordered the 1983 payoff pitch season that he released a couple months ago. Um, and I ordered that season and, uh, you know, kind of put it in one of my uh, boxes here and kind of set it aside and didn't think much about it. One day in the mail, my wife brought in the mail and she had a little package for me and I'm like, 
what the hell is this? I opened it up, and it was a note from the designer who said that there was several um, players that were incorrectly carded. And he was shipping these out to everyone. And he also included, I think there's like five or six fringe player cards that hadn't been carded. And he included those for free. Name the last time you've had a baseball company send you something because they made a mistake. They carded something wrong and they sent you out brand new cards. And not only that, okay, not only that. But they sent you other stuff for free as a, hey, sorry about that. We messed up. We carded these players wrong. Throw the other cards away. Here's the new cards. And oh, by the way, here's like six other cards of players that we hadn't carded before. We're giving these to everyone as a thanks for supporting us. Uh, it's the only company that I've come across that has done that. Okay. The only company that is, I've come across, I, I had, after I experienced that, I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to order, I'm going to order some more seasons. So I entered two more season files from him and uh, emailed me back. He said, okay, I'll get your order in and I'll send it to the printers next week and I'll ship it out to you. I'm like, cool, no problem. Well, come the next week, he emails me and says, I got your order in from the printer, but they screwed up. They completely screwed up the order, so now I've got to send it back to the printer. I'm so sorry about this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you free shipping on your order, and I'm going to refund you that for you know because the printer chip the, the printer messed up the order, and I feel bad or whatever. Blah blah blah. I'm on the back, and I'm like, no, dude, dude, seriously, okay? <laughs> I don't need this order. If the order is going to be a week or two late, I don't really care. I just got your 1983 season in. I got my 2018 season in. I don't need this order. This is just this is just me being greedy and wanting more stuff. So just uh, no, I don't just I don't want anything. Just just send it to me when it's ready. It, like he then refunded me like twenty dollars off of my bill. And even though I told the guy, don't do it. I don't need the order. It wasn't your fault. The printer screwed up. Okay, it's not your fault. I don't care. Take a couple weeks, get it right, and then ship it to me. But no, then he goes and gives me $20 off my order when I told him not to do it. No, I don't want, I want, just send me the order when it's ready and it's right. All right. When's the last time you've had a company that done that for you? All right. So for me personally, from my experiences, and now I can't, I can't, tell you what everyone else's experience has been, but I'm just telling you what I've experienced, top notch quality service. And when you're looking at doing reviews for different game companies and supporting these different games, all right, when you have someone that goes above and beyond, that game slowly but surely works its way down the list to number one somehow, some way. Uh, and the last pro is there are a few different ways to do things in the system, specifically like when you're doing your seal, uh, steals. Um, when you're doing steals, there are different ways. You can either use the hold rating or you can use the jump rating or you can use a combination thereof uh, to, to do your stealing. But there's th different ways that you can do things in the game uh, with the stats. But you can play it however you want. You can use the hold rating. I use the uh, I use the hold rating. I know Combat Painter, uh, he uses the jump rating. We play the game, the same very game, but he plays it slightly different than I do. I use the hold rating, he uses the jump rating, and we both have fun because that's the way we wanted to have it. But it's, 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 it's nice to have that available to us. It's very nice to have options on how I want to play the game. Do I want to use the hold rating? Do I think that's more realistic or do I want to use the jump rating or do I want to use the combination thereof, right? So having, having all of the ability to be able to uh, play the game how I see fit, all right? So let's talk about the cons. Uh, again, there is no perfect game. I'm not saying payoff pitch is number one because it's a perfect game. I'm not saying that at all. There are cons. Let's talk about the cons, all right? This is kind of my number one con. It's always been my number one con. If you know anything about me and my channel, you probably know what I'm going to be talking about. The charts that came with the game. 
The charts that came with the game are not, uh, they're very underwhelming for me. If you are new to baseball games and stuff, you're going to look at these charts and go, oh, these are fine. Uh, but if you play a bunch of different games, I would say the charts that came with the game are kind of, I'm going to call it underwhelming because there's just nothing fancy. There's only uh, like four pages of charts, right? There's only four pages of charts, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, but that hit error out defensive charts. Okay, all that stuff's on the fast action card now, right? So you can get rid of all that page because you don't need that. Uh, your runner advancement, your, uh, you don't need any of that information because it's on your fast action cards. So a lot of this stuff you don't need anymore because it's on the fast action cards, if you have the fast action cards. But if you use the charts, I would say the charts are a little bit underwhelming to say the least, right? They're just, they're nothing great. They're nothing fancy to dancy to be done with. Uh, they're okay. They're just, they're just underwhelming, you know, kind of just generic charts, right? Just, you know kind of generic charts. I, I don't like the charts very much. I don't know if I mentioned this. I don't like the charts. All right, so that's con number one. Con number two, and this this is a biggie, so I want you guys to pay attention to this, because if you haven't paid an off pitch and you want to play a payoff pitch, uh, you're going to experience this as I have in every other payoff pitch out there. All right? We looked at Dan Straley, right? Dan Straley, he's got some pretty tough results in the five and six. On the eight result there, he's got the seven ballpark, right? Wow, that's, everyone knows bell curve, two to 12, seven is the most common number. So ballpark, he's going to give up a lot of ballpark checks, which is not good. That's not pit, That's not good pitching. What you want to see is that tough result, right? Let's see if I can find a good example of what I'm going to talk about here when I'm talking about a con. It won't be on Atlanta. There's no Atlanta pitcher that's that tough. Mm, I wish I had. Uh, I wish I had out the Washington Nationals cards. Um, uh, uh, not really that good either. All right. Uh, I kind of will show you these two as an example. All right. I will kind of show you these two as an example. All right, you're going to experience this <laughs> where you got Rex Brothers, right? Rex Brothers. Fortunately for us, oops, he only played in one game, right? He only played in one game. Yes, I got a card for a player that was only in one game. And I think he only pitched uh, less than an inning. And he gave up two walks. That's why his card is like this. But you're going to experience this where you get these pitchers that are just terrible. Terrible pitchers. Right? Patient results are good for the batter. Right? Really good for the batter. Wheelhouse are the best. Wheelhouse are the best. Then I would say patient. Then in play are all good for the batter. And then you have the tough, which are not good for the batter. Because they're tough, obviously. Uh, so patient results are really good. I'm going to get a lot of walks, and it shows because this guy walked two batters. But that's you're, this is kind of an example I wanted to share with you is you're going to get these cards, and you're going to get these pitchers that are simply horrible. And you have you have to start them because maybe he's a starting pitcher, right? We have to start Dan Straley eventually because he. He started 23 games. If you're playing Miami, right, he started 23 games. He's going to be starting your pitcher for 23 of your games during the season. And he's got that ballpark right there in the number seven spot, which means when he roll a seven, which is a lot of the time, you're going to give up either an in-play or a wheelhouse check. And those are really good for the batters, wheelhouse and, and in-play checks. So to have that right in the middle is bad, right, for Dan Straley. But... <laughs> I can I can attest that we as the Atlanta Braves have just as bad a you know pitcher uh, you know here's um, well let's let's find a normal everyday starter that was just as bad where is what's his face that can't throw a pitch of his life uh, Julio Tehran right one of my starting pitchers for Atlanta. 31 games, 
Nine and nine, three point nine four. But look at what's right in the middle there. I got an in play in number five, and I have a ballpark in number eight. Five and eights are rolled a lot of times, and my starting pitchers, you know, three point nine four ERA. He's still giving up a lot of good results right there in the middle. And then on the other end of the spectrum is you have pitchers that seem like they're in hittable, right? Now, imagine uh, facing off against Max Scherzer, and this isn't Max Scherzer, but let's just say that ballpark was a tough result, and you had a tough on 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. That's like 70% of the time you roll, you're going to get a tough result, which gives the batter almost no chance at getting hit. So this isn't even, you know, Max Scherzer quality type card, but there's been some pitchers that we've come across where we literally have like no chance of getting a hit because it's like every result is a tough. So once in a while, you'll end up getting those small hits off of them. But to get two or three to go in a row is just so hard. So my con would be some the hard pitchers seem too hard and the easy pitchers seem too easy. All right. So keep that in mind because there, there's we faced Max Scherzer as a 2011 Atlanta, Atlanta Braves so far several times, and he has smoked us every single time because we can't freaking get a hit off him. He's just so damn hard, and that might be ris- realistic, right? It might be totally, totally realistic because I mean, Max Scherzer just pitched yesterday or the day before, and he struck out like 11 dudes, right? And the time before, he struck out like nine with his broken nose and his swollen eye, right? So he's had like 20 strikeouts in the last two games, and he had a, like a one-hitter going in the seventh inning. So these might be statistically accurate, okay? It just seems as a player, wow, I've got no shot. And now, like I said, that might be completely accurate because as a baseball player, if I'm going up against Max Scherzer, I'm thinking to myself, God, man, the chance of me getting a hit off of this guy is almost nil, right? And that's basically what happens. Like nobody can get a hit off him, right? Um, so that's that's what it, you know. Maybe these are statistically accurate, but I would say the tough pitcher or the tough players, the tough pitchers seem really tough, and the the really wimpy pitchers. You know, seem like, really? You couldn't give this guy a break? Right? You couldn't give him, like, you know, one tough anywhere? You couldn't give this one dude a little bit of a break? Come on. Give him a break. Give him a break. Like Josh Raven here. All right, here's Josh Raven. Well, he only pitched two games, but here's Josh Raven's card, right? He's got a one little break there. A six. The rule of six... And then a six, and then a six, he's going to get out of the inning without giving up a hit, probably. But if you roll anything but a six, he's probably going to be giving up six or seven runs, which is what his ERA was, 6.0. So the the easy pitchers seem a little too easy, and the bat and the and the really tough pitchers seem a little bit a little bit too hard. Maybe it's statistically accurate, and that's the way it's designed, and that's fine. It's just, wow, I just feel like I don't have any chance against Max Scherzer. Like, I'm wasting I'm wasting my time playing this game because I know I'm going to lose, right? Uh, and then, last but not least, yes, there is another con. There is another con so far. Uh, we talked about their not underwhelming charts, all right? Uh, when you roll 0, zero it's a rare play. Uh, and the rare play chart in this game has almost every one of the results is an injury. So if you're doing like an as-played historic lineup um, replay and you don't, you're not going to play with injuries, then you basically, the rare play chart, you, you don't want to use the rare play chart because it's almost all injuries. Um, two is arguing call and, and catchers thrown out. Three is check for injury on the pitcher. Four is check for injury on the batter. Five is um, 
Line drive single off the pitcher. Check for an injury. Six is our ground ball to short. Uh, he's pulled up lane. Check for an injury. Seven, roll on the defensive chart. Blah, blah, blah. See if he makes the play. So seven is like the, uh, oh, no, wait. Uh, check to see if he makes the play. If he makes the play, great. If he doesn't make the play, check for an error. Okay. Uh, eight is rain delay. Nine is a brawl erupts. Check for injuries and players being ejected. Number 10 is a foul ball. Check for injury. Number 11, pitcher ejected for arguing call. And 12 is batter ejected for rolling a call. So pretty much if you're not playing with injuries, you can see a lot of injuries on the rare play chart. Kind of, you know, goes back to my charts are, are kind of underwhelming. And I mean, maybe... Maybe there's somebody out there in the world, someone out there dedicated enough to create some new charts for payoff pits. Hopefully, we'll find someone like that. Hopefully. And hopefully, uh, you know, that person would be kind enough and wonderful enough to share all them with all of us wonderful payoff pe pits people out there that want to get access to them. So hopefully, we can find somebody like that. So rare playing charts... All their charts kind of underwhelming. Hard pitchers are really, really hard. The easy pitchers seem really, really easy. And maybe that's, like I said, maybe it's designed that way. But, uh, you know, I love the pitcher interaction and stuff. And so, yes, you guys knew it. You knew it was coming. I've talked well about this game ever since coming across it. And it's only been going up and up the ladder to number one because of all of the reasons we stated Customer service, I mean, the guy doesn't know me from Adam, and I don't know him from Adam, but everything he's done for me has been outstanding as a customer, which makes me want to support him and uh, help him out in any way I can. Uh, and, you know, the examples that I gave you, there's, I'm sure, hundreds of other examples out there as well. The quality and the price for what you're getting is top-notch, absolutely top-notch. Uh, the batter and pitcher interactions are wonderful, and you get the results from the play card, so it works really well. And with the fast action deck ready to roll, uh, you can zip through a game in a very reasonable amount of time. So number one payoff pitch, final score, 8.7, 8.7. And there you go. That is our top 16 games. We're going to go through them one more time. In case you're just joining us, number 16, Everyday Player. Final score, 5.5. Number 15, Superstar Baseball or slash Sports Illustrated Baseball. Final score of 5.8. Number 14 is Play Ball Baseball. Final score, 6.0. Number 13, Dice Baseball. Final score, 6.1. Number 12, Status Pro Baseball. Total score, 6.5. These were all done in episode number one. Episode number two was number 11, Deep Drive Baseball, total score 6.6. .6. Number 10, Dynasty League Baseball, total score 6.7. Number 9, Roster Card Baseball, total score 7.0. Number 8, Internet Baseball League, total score 7.1. Number 7, Replay Baseball, total score 7.1. These were all done in episode two. And then tonight, if you're just joining us, number six, surprise, surprise, Stratomatic Baseball, 7.5. Number five, APBA Baseball, with a 7.7. .7. Number four, Fall Classic Baseball, with 7.9. Number three, National Pastime Next Generation Plus Baseball, 8.0. Number two, Inside Pitch Baseball, 8.4. And last but not least, number one, Payoff Pitch Baseball, 8.7. All righty. Woo. All righty. So, hopefully, again, uh, you know, you may or may not agree with anything that I said. Uh, that's not the purpose of this video. It's not to uh, get you to agree with what I say. What this video and this video series has done is just basically kind of introducing 16 card and dice baseball games to either new players or players that are looking to add a game 
or two to their repertoire and listen to me and just find out uh, what is entailed and how the game plays. Find out what I think is a con and what I find out is a, is a pro. And then use your own wisdom and your own experience knowing what you may or may not like in your baseball game. If you uh, like a very simple baseball game that you don't have much room on your table, maybe your number one game would be roster card baseball. Because you can have two sheets of paper, two ten-sided dice and six-sided dice, and that's all the room you need. And you're ready to go. That might be your number one baseball because you want something easy and simple and, uh, um, and, and something that plays quick without a lot of rules. That might be your number one game. Maybe you can't afford uh, to invest in any new games. And you're looking to play something. It kind of narrows down what's your, you know, what's available to you. You can play uh, National Pastime Next Generation Plus, uh, which is totally free. You might choose to play Internet Baseball League, which is, again, totally free. All you need to do is download and print it out. For me personally, any card and dice player out there should download and try Internet Baseball League and National Pastime Next Generation Plus. Those two games, you should download, print out a couple teams, print out the charts, and give it a go. You might find, I know there were several people in the chat earlier who said that I, I never thought I would like uh, a system based upon APBA, but I'm really, really liking it. You might be the same way. When I fought APBA tooth and nails for the longest time, because I'm like, it's stupid. I'll look at a number, and then I got to go to a chart. That's stupid. I've had a blast with APBA so far. Uh, you know, it's been a pain in the ass trying to get all the boards and try to figure out which boards to use for which with system and all that other stuff we talked about, but uh, you know this is just this is just to get you to look and say you know what this isn't 1970 anymore, right? I don't have two choices: APBA and Stratomatic, right? Or Status Pro, maybe back then, maybe in the 70s, Status Pro was back then too. So you don't have two or three choices. You have literally probably 20 choices for baseball games out there. There's several games that I didn't cover because I don't own them for several reasons. We didn't cover History Maker Baseball. I would highly recommend if you're interested in baseball, go check out History Maker Baseball. There is a lot of people that really, really, really love that system. It's not for me. I don't own it, so I'm not going to review it, and I'm not going to add it to my list and talk bad about it because I've never played it. Check out some players that have played it and enjoy it, and you might find it. That might be your number one game. But for me, I'm not going to review it because I don't own it, and I'm not going to do that. Same thing with Pine Tar Baseball. Go check out that game on some of our fellow YouTuber channels out there because they have played it. Some of them had a great time with it, and they really enjoyed themselves with it. I don't own it, so I'm not going to add it to my list because I've never played it. And I'm not going to buy it and purchase a uh, system that doesn't seem like it is uh, going anywhere or expanding. So these are two games that we talked about in the beginning that I don't own. And I'm not going to plan on doing in this review because I've never played them. And I'm not planning on ever purchasing either one of these games. But uh, I wanted to mention that now because it, those two games, you might want to check these two games out. Because these would be two that you might uh, find interesting and, uh, you know, you might want to invest in these. So, lots of variety. Whether you like lefty-righty splits or not. Uh, you know, whether you want to be able to download the game in a PDF, which is cheaper, and print things out yourself. Whether you want a free version of a game. Again, Internet Baseball League, National Pastime, Next Generation Plus. Everyone, every baseball simmer should at least download and give it a try. It's only going to take you a few sheets to download, cut out. It, literally 20 minutes, you could have two teams cut out, ready to go, and, and at least give it a try. Print out the charts, and you're ready to go. I mean, that's as simple as it goes. That's all you need. For free, you've got nothing to invest but a 
you know, an hour of your time and you can try the games out. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I think, uh, there's a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of really good systems, really good systems out there. Not everyone can be number one. We talked about that in the beginning. All right. Just because a game is ranked number 16 or 15 or 14 or 13 to me, right? We're not talking about, oh, okay, well, the bottom, th the bottom third I never play, the top third I always play, and the middle, the middle I you play once in a while. That's, that's not, that's not how it went. I mean, Stratomatic, which I play just about two or three times a week now, ended up being number six, which it barely, barely made it into the, uh, you know, the top third. Barely made it in the top third, but I play that just about every day. Um, I play a lot of roster card and was number nine, uh, deep drive. We did a whole world series on deep drive baseball and that ended up being number 11. So just because I rank it, I rank a game, you know, in the bottom half or the, you know, from say eight above doesn't mean it's a bad game. There's nothing wrong with any one of these games. They all have their advantages and disadvantages. There wasn't a single game that I said, here's all the pros and there's no cons. Every game has got pros. Every game has got cons. All right. You got to just figure out which pro you enjoy, which con you don't like and figure out which game fits your bill. That's all this video series is meant to do. All right, well, that's it. I'm out of here. We've been going way too long, over three and a half hours for these last six videos, or these last uh, six teams. Uh, but hopefully um, everyone enjoyed our ride along, and hopefully you all learned uh, at least a, about a couple games that maybe you hadn't heard about in the past. And hopefully uh, you leave a thought and a comment, a suggestion down below, a game that you didn't have, that you tried out, and you really, really enjoyed let me know in the comments section down below if that is your experience. So that would be super cool to know. Uh, and always, you can uh, let me know what's going on by leaving a comment. Uh, and uh, we'll see you all tomorrow night, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to talk Dungeons & Dragons. Till then, everyone have a great night. We'll see you all very, very, very soon.